Hello and welcome to yet another offline catch up with your favorite mm -hmm. pals, Raggleton, and... Fringo, and Mumblo. Yes, it is us. We are, we are catching up on the fabled episode that was the, if you remember, we covered Hassan and the Tomorrow War. Man, memories, huh? Hassan and the Tomorrow <laughs> yeah. War. What a great film. Oh, yeah. There is a, there is an EFAP movies for that that likely hasn't been released by the time of this video releasing. Um, mm. There's so many EFAP movies to come. They're gonna come, 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 everywhere. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah, who knows what kind of messages we got in that stream now, but we're about to find out and go through the lot of them. It's gonna be yeah, great. I've them, uh, so it'll be really good to see them. Mario Kart in the background. Change it up. Yay. Um, Oh, let's get started. Eh? Uh, the first one says, "Use cave paintings. You will understand that." Mm, Still think that's a advanced bit advanced technology. for Hassan, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Harsh to assume that that's just easily something you'd understand. How long would Hassan just sit there and wonder at the thought that toilets in the fictional land of Australia flush in the opposite direction? Um, I mean. <laughs> I guess, what, it go the other way is like, that's one of those ones that's kind of tough to get around. It's still tough for him to deal with that, yeah, I'd say. I can see why they asked the question. Mm. Hassan has gained 1,000 followers from last stream to this one. Yeah, he gets, it's like Amazing. perpetual, right? Like it would be, it would just be loads. A lot of idiots out there with really low standards. He is supplying the, the their market what they need. Uh, use your Pokemon. A dog the size of a draft horse, a weasel the size of a German Shepherd, a flying Komodo dragon, or the elusive Ivithad Kamrig Droog, which... Well, I don't know what that last one is. Thing so is, basically, a big dog and a flying Komodo dragon is the, uh, are, the, are the options we got here. Presumably, I'd go for the uh, weasel. Um, is, it, yeah. is it friendly and chill? I figure... I assume so, if it's your Pokemon, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a toss-up for me. Could be the, cute. the big dog or the flying Komodo dragon. Could you fly on the cut? Probably not. No, Komodo dragons aren't big enough to mm -hmm. ride on. And if they flew, then they would have even... I don't know if they could contend with all that weight. I'm, I think I'm going to go with the big dog. Yeah, That'd I think I'm... Fun. Same. The old dog. The Clifford. Yes. Aren't they making a live-action Clifford... I thought they did they make it. <laughs> oh, did they? Oh. Those bastards. Well, all right then. I guess it just came and went. It didn't make a big red impression, I suppose. <laughs> Every time this outlet licking Tarzan looking ass opens his nuggy hole, all I can hear is <laughs> Batwoman dialogue. <laughs> Batwoman dialogue. The son would fit right into outlet the world of Batwoman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tarzan's cool. Well, he would get the dialogue wrong. Where Tarzan has to say, me, Tarzan, you, Jane. It would take him a lot of takes to get that one right. That's a lot of lines. I forget which is the one that, he, like, the saying he was trying to reproduce. It was, yeah, it was like, don't uh, piss on me and call it rain or whatever. But he, he like, struggled ten times to say the saying because he couldn't figure it out. It was good shit. <laughs> it is a, that is a tough one, though. Um, are we revisiting nobody's favorite chalk licking knuckle dragger? Tear him up, massives. Well, kind of does it to himself. Um, I said, all I ever do is watch his streams, and I'm like, well, here it is. Another gold mine of him saying incredibly funny and stupid things. Uh, and yet, on he goes. Uh,. Hassan was spawned when the sloppy seconds of every bad idea ever had coalesced into one coom sock and then dropped on its head. Oh, oh my goodness. That's lewd. And That's not true. I can see there's a lot of love in, in these messages for Hassan. Yeah, he's great. Hassan's great. Hmm. Um, this is rags about your favorites on fear affinity dot dot dot. I don't know if they're referring to. Mm-hmm. Angry Super Chat 2. I guess they sent one a while oh. back. I, I don't, yeah, alright. Well, 
Hope they you... felt anger, but they didn't know what to say. Yeah. But they needed to say more. It's like, ah, angry super chat, like subtitles. Just imagine an angry super chat. Mm hmm. Mola, do you eat my Weetabix? It was in the cupboard and now it's gone. Um, I don't think I did. I I I, I, I like Weetabix though. Weetabix is cool. Weetabix. Is that what it's called over there? Weet Weetabix. What do you call it? Oh, we have Weetabix. Hmm. We do not have either of those. Wow. That's okay. It's basically just a clump of oats, like, in, you know, it's like cardboard, basically. <laughs> you can add it's stuff. Like you want to start your morning with cardboard and milk. Yeah. I had to take a Hassan, door closed. What did I miss? Hi, Rags. Well, I mean, Hi. presumably I haven't missed much at all because this thing would have just died. Uh. Farming me for views equals I hate you covering me. Um, he says it literally like about everybody, whoever covers him. What I think it's uh it's because everything is framed through the lens of clout. Mhm. Mm yeah, because it's all it's all tactical and it's all well, business it's all transactional. I think. Yeah, it's it's like any sort of engagement that you have with anybody who is, in some loose sense, your peer is transactional. Uh, Gadalb5, Mooper reacts. Just need to film your chair for 15 minutes. Well, don't worry, that made it into the, the Gadalb. Mm -hmm. References to such events. Um, I don't agree with what you're saying. Fuck you, get banned, you stupid idiot. Lol, typical far leftist. Does this knuckle dragging ape have unironic subs? He's very popular. He's one of the most popular careers it's online. extremely popular. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, he... It really is wild doesn't, like, it's just the poster child for not being able to handle dissent, like, in any way. Uh, you've gained infamy with the Pika Legion. I'm sure he... Good, that means I'm doing stuff right. Like, yeah, I, 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 he still wouldn't know a single thing about us, he, he, but I'm sure he hates us. It wouldn't make much, like, it wouldn't surprise me much. Uh... Mods ban anyone who says EFAP. Mods ban anyone who says JXE. Mods ban anyone who makes fun of my nuggies. Why does this behavior sound so familiar? Hmm. Oh. That is kind of familiar. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Maybe Hassan is a big fan of wings. I don't know. Maybe Hassan... I think Hassan just takes more pleasure in doing it himself and exercising that power over others. Yeah. Whereas wings is more than happy to, ex you know, to, to give that to others to do. His cronies, his lackeys, mm -hmm. his mods. Now that's an existence, being a mod for Wings of Redemption. Yeah. Uh, if you go platinum, it has nothing to do with luck. It just means a million people are stupid as fuck. That's a quote from Immortal Technique. I don't know who that is. And I don't know what it's referring to specifically. Like a rank or a unlock or something? This guy makes Major Lee sound eloquent and composed. I remember Major Lee. I remember Major Lee. That was, um... Fun times. That was an adventure. Yeah, fun. That was fun. We need to have another one of those, uh, someday. Just where we get some guy just squirming to defend some bad thing. Like Rise of Skywalker? I'm pretty sure he... He, he thinks that movie isn't that bad. Or at least he I'm, thinks it's defensible. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm sure so he enjoyed the, the Raylo kiss with that. Oh, yeah. Did, I mean... I did. You did. We all did. It was good stuff. Are you sure? Uh, it's I one of my favorite parts of the film, really. I wouldn't be surprised if Hassan is a CIA psyop to make internet commies look bad. Well, it's not working. Ooh. Well, I guess it's working for um, some people. <laughs> I don't know. People? Yeah. It would be funny if Hassan was like a really intelligent CIA agent and he was like, I just don't understand. I, I was as stupid as I could possibly be. Yeah. Work. God, these people will believe anything. And then he again, then he loses track on what his original job was and he gets drunk on power. Uh, Your mission's over. No, I assume no. That's happened, I'm right? staying like, here forever. Or an undercover cop oh, in yeah, like I, mafia I, or whatever eventually just becomes like too invested and just does the job. Yeah, this is way better. I'm making a lot more money. I got friends. People here understand me. 
This Pablo guy, he's actually kind of nice. He's a good friend. He just wants you to get to know him. Mm. Uh, have you guys seen Edge of Tomorrow, good or bad? Why? I have seen it. I like it. But I would recommend YMS's video on it. I have not yeah, seen it. Yeah, it's, it's not... I like it. <laughs> Got problems. Time travel. <laughs> there's, um, it, you know, there's a. It's just like the fundamental mechanics of how all the alien stuff works. Uh, there's, there's issues, mm -hmm. but I think even YMS said there's things to appreciate about it. He just got frustrated. Absolutely. I said, I like it. Hi, Rags. Hi, Dev. Hi, Mola. Hi, Fringy. Hi, Matt. Hello. Hi. Hey. Uh, this Hassan guy has inspired me to write up a D&D &D villain based off of him, whose only power is his money giving him a tyrannical persona with no real power of his own. I mean... You gotta make him really stupid. Yeah. And he can't be eloquent. He has to be attractive, and he has to get, have, like, a rich uncle who's maybe a duke or a baron that he got <laughs> his power from. But he himself has no actual talent. And he has... He, he could be like a... Oh, he's gotta be a cult leader. Like, um... Like Akhenaten, right? He was a pharaoh, but he also was kind of like his own little cult leader. So you want to, I say little cult leader, big cult leader. Point being, um, yeah, there's a lot you could do if you wanted to make a Hassan inspired character. I think that'd be fun. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. And the more you know the real Hassan, the more you might know the character. It's encouraging you to study his streams. Hmm. Maybe that's bad. Don't do it though. <laughs> it's not worth it. Uh, how many Andre the Giant clones versus a bear versus any one animal? I'm not sure what that means. It's like a three-way fight? Hmm. What if caveman clubs? What if knight armor? What if joints actually worked properly? Um, there are too me. many variables that I don't really feel like... I, I feel like i got to do a lot of work to try and engage with this question, and I'd rather <laughs> not. Well, I, uh, um... How many Andre the Giants would it take to beat a bear if we just go with that? It's like, uh... I, I don't... Andre the Giant. I don't... Who, who is that? Oh, you, do, you don't know He's a big... Really big guy. Yeah, like, Have his whole seen, thing um, is just being a huge guy. But he's... Princess, Princess Bride? Bride is the most famous thing, yeah. Uh, I don't think I've seen guy Princess Bride. Well, um... Yeah, he's not familiar. He's a big guy, I can say that, yeah. He's a giant. But um, I don't, I don't know that. That's the plot of bear. That's what they're saying, yeah. How many Andres? I, I feel like the bear still wins if it's one. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think one on one, even Andre the Giant can't take on a bear. However. Um, however. If there were two, three, four, five. Oh. Maybe. Let me let me. Andre the Giant. So he was seven four, and he he his build weight was five hundred twenty pounds, <laughs> and that's mean. That's not like boogie five hundred twenty pounds. No, this is mean. I will fuck you up. I'm seven four, five hundred twenty yeah. pounds. Um, so oh boy. I don't know. I'm, I might go with two. Hmm. I think two Andre the Giants might be able to take on a bear. How do you think they're going to kill a bear? I think um, maybe going for the eyes and uh, uh, suffocating it. I bet they could, if, if they could if they could close the nose and the mouth and hold it there. They one of I think because uh, there's two of them doing it. I think they might be able to do that. I just have a feeling like one good swipe from the bear and you've already got an Andre yeah. that's like struggling, you know, to stay in the fight at all. Maybe <laughs> one of them ha might have to be a uh, sacrificial Andre so that the yeah. other one could kind of get on the bear's head, maybe, on, or on the back. I'm I might not sure put it's it hard at, to um, say. Maybe two. Four. I, I think. feel like, I, yeah, I'm thinking that's more realistic, four or five. I think two's not enough. We may, we may yeah, really need the sacrificial Andre. I think I think that's that's kind of what I'm going for here. I think the two Andres would look at each other and say, "One of us, if if one of us is going to survive, I mean, if if we, 
you know, I think we're going to have to do this, and there's going to have to be that moment where one of them, or just, you know, something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, yeah, I am. Yeah, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say three is the. I think, barring exceptional versions of Andre the Giant, or I'll go with three. Guess we'll never know. Hassan is the kind of guy to be in a sinking boat and try and save everybody by drinking all the water coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be really he funny, though. I don't know. Uh, still watching the Hassan coverage from last EFAB. Thanks for treating folks who send you money better than banning them. I appreciate the wealth of content from everyone on here. You guys go above and beyond. Oh, that's nice. Thanks right. very much. We try. And I'm sorry we took so long to get to this message, but I will be able to say soon enough that every message has been responded to. We're getting there. This time catching EFAP live, so hail the long man and the toxic brood. May there be rhino milk for all and high rags. Oh, hello. Thanks for the rhino milk. EFAP intervention needed to tell Jay to calm down. Yeah, I mean, judging from uh, all those reactors, right? Like, I'm Hassan. Jay's a crazy person that's just going nuts. Thank goodness. Uh, it all calmed down after. Who knows how out of control it could have gone. Mola, you long meanie. I missed the first three hours of the stream, and now it's your fault. Damn, three hours? It's already been three hours three into, hours. The, into the stream? Okay. Really? Apparently, according to that, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, luckily, on YouTube, you can rewind, set to times two, and then as soon as it catches up, it'll just go to live. Twitch has not implemented this yet. Give them time. Maybe another decade. That's kind of surprising that they haven't implemented that as a feature. Yeah, it's just... Like, I don't know how else to say it. YouTube has the superior vision for that particular element, anyway. Mm-hmm. And YouTube yeah, comes they're... packaged with every video can be watched at whatever quality. While Twitch, it's only for streams that have X amount of viewers and up. And YouTube's rolling out that thing uh, soon with the um, sending oh. people to streams. What's that? What's I hosting? Posting. And they got they're, they're doing uh, gifted memberships as well. They've just those both have been copied from Twitch, which is funny, right? We're just talking about like you should learn from YouTube. YouTube's learning from you. Well, yeah, uh, I guess it's just that Twitch hasn't been quick enough to try and get ahead and be always in front when it comes to live streaming features and functionality. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I would say capitalism is ruining every part of our lives, Hassan. You can skip ads by following me on Twitch for $5, also, Hassan. Well, well, yeah, we, I mean, we've, we've talked about he's a... Uh... That, that meme, though. Oh, you live in society. Ho, ho. And, like, that's a really great rebuke. He's a ruthless capitalist. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I yeah, say... Pretty yeah, I mean, what was it? He bought that... Well, no, that was a means of production, that computer oh, for the God. editor, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and he gave that one guy the uh, exposure. That it's one, one of the most frustrating movie. things that happens whenever people casually discuss economic systems. Like, how you engage with them is still at least somewhat down to you. You get to make a whole bunch of choices. Yeah. It's, uh... it's not like there's one method of engaging in this economy, which is to maximize your wealth at all, yeah. you know, like as much as possible. You have options. You have a lot like, of options. It's not my fault, it was the system. It's like, really? The system. Mm -hmm. system made you do all these things, huh? I mean, the... worker cops are, are like a thing that you can create under capitalism. I mean, aren't worker cops basically the compromise under capitalism, like to achieve something that's closer to your objectives politically? Yeah, there's just there's a lot of wiggle room uh, to do a lot yeah. of things the way that you would like to, at least. But you don't want to because it's less money. Yeah, uh, you know how else can you <laughs> say? Like, we run a way more ethical system than he does. Uh, if 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 it's going to be because like he's defined that it's unethical. Well, if the right? ethic is that um, max capitalism is bad, then um, that's what I'm saying. He's defined it ethic, as unethical, yeah. but then he engages in it, so it's just like, huh? Well, yeah, but he's not talking about himself. He's talking about <laughs> not him, the people who aren't. Well, him. again, he's talking about the system as if it's not made up of people. 
yeah, like a nice vague general sort of enemy you can point to that has no discernible face except for, I guess, some billionaires. Meanwhile, enjoy five so, ads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I'm just gonna go into my kitchen that's bigger than your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To make, to get my nuggets. Uh... Incels are known to be angry bearded guys who stream for hours and complain all day long about, uh, um, uh, oh, oh, dude. Dude? Um. Dude? Well, he donates uh, to, uh, to, like, strippers and stuff, right? I'm sure he's not an incel. You can pay for well, it. I mean, he's donated more to them than, like, political candidates, right? Yeah. All good. I can't. <laughs> I just... But you see, Fringy, this, you think that's a gotcha, but have you considered that since everything is political, Donating to strippers is a political donation. Mm. See, yeah. got you there. I hadn't thought of that. What are the politics of Teletubbies? Uh, what, what's, what are they're aliens, right? What's, what's the <laughs> landscape on their planet? Are they immigration? That's the political aspect of Teletubbies. I think that would be a really fun project to watch the first few yeah. seasons of Teletubbies and come up with a legit theme about and then something make really a deep. video. Yeah. An unironic, like, essay on the political undertones of Teletubbies. <laughs> like, how it's affecting Western Teletubbies youth. Teletubbies it's capitalism and consumerism has gotten so bad that the means of advertising products are baked into your very bodies. Yeah, so there's, there's so much you could definitely work with. Yeah. I- that's a fun project. That feels like a- that feels like an April Fool's video. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, Dev's girlfriend and Sargon's wife for EFAP MCU retrospective. I have no familiarity with either of those people, but uh, I don't sure. know yeah, I have no idea. If they want to message us, maybe I don't know. Um, we can just have Dev and Sargon on. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like, dude, uh, dude, just, just, yeah, no, no, yeah, like, um, ah, I got it. Maybe, uh, like. No, no, just do. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that in his streams. And Adam and Sitch point this out when oh. they watch his videos. His editor cuts all of those out. So he's like, constantly cutting in the way that he makes sentences. Because Hassan. Mm. Like, Nobody wants Hassan to speak better more than his editor. <laughs> no doubt. I'm sure it's really annoying to have to do so much editing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jay is playing the. Uh... Halo campaign right now, yeah. It, yeah, apparently it works for Jay, but not for me. I can't Aww. play. <laughs> At least right now, I know anyway. I've had issues with the MCC, just getting it to, like, load what I want it to load. Because you go into the game and then you choose, like, the things you want it to download, with the single or the multiplayer for each game, mm -hmm. or whatever. And sometimes it just won't do it, right? Well, I mean, and have to... I had a bout where I just couldn't play the game. Like, every time it did, it hard crashed my computer. I, I just couldn't play yeah. Halo 2. And I, I, yeah, I couldn't play Halo 2 for like months. <laughs> and then eventually it started working. It's whenever an issue gets solved, a new issue arises, and there's so many things that can go wrong that I have no idea, like, how you can ever, as an individual, know how to fix whatever issue you're presented with. No idea. I don't know. It's annoying. Is it? Uh, Hassan's brain trying to work is like cracking a jack in the box, but, or cranking it, sorry, but instead of the jack popping out, the box just falls apart. <laughs> a little bit. He does take a long time to have a thought, sometimes. <laughs> he does take a long time to have a thought. Um, hello all, more quality Hassan content on the docket? Uh, yes. Hi, Rags. No. Hi. Any thoughts on the new character in Apex? Oh. I wonder who that would have been a year ago. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know who... I can't remember. It, I, I, I legit don't know who they're talking about. It could be <laughs> Fuse or Valkyrie. I haven't even played... I haven't even played this season yet, so I don't even know the new one. Um, I Yeah, I just legit don't... Um, well, whatever the newest know. one... Oh, so you see, whatever the newest one you played is, if you want to give a quick thing up. Um, I'm just not in a position to say, because I don't really play any of the new ones. There's like three that I sort of play, and they're all, um, pretty, 
they're they're older characters. They're not newer ones, and I just don't have an interest in a lot of the newer ones. But they can be good. I just don't have an interest in really playing them. Fair enough. I just hit Bowser with Bowser shell. That's oh, that's some poetic irony, isn't could it? Could be an achievement, but there's no achievements. What would the achievement be called? Um, Bell Shock. Yeah, that's probably what <laughs> that's it's good be enough. Uh, if we, yeah. I don't know. Bellronic. Shell Ronic. I feel like that's <laughs> definitely worse than Shell Shock. Uh. Hi, Frogman. Hey. What's your one favorite thing about Australia? My favorite thing? Yeah. Um. Uh, I do like uh, our marsupials. I like I like that little um subcategory of mammals that uh, inhabit this here continent. They're a really interesting assortment of critters. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hassan, dude, I can say something really wise and clever here. What should I say? Come on, think, my brain, think. He just says no. <laughs> no. It is kind it of funny. Life, though, wishing you could say something clever, but just never you being able to. You just have the capacity to. Yeah, you, yeah, like, you, you, you literally can't. Up. You don't have the brain required for it. But you always want to be clever, but you can't. That must be such well, a curse. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of like um, when you're trying to get good at art, and you're like, I know what I want it to be, but I just don't have like the capacity as, a, <laughs> as, a, as an artist to like realize that image in my head. Hobo. It's that, but your whole life. And Hobo just like with the barbecue. Foot. Yeah, pretty much. Why does it mine look like that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke because it just perfectly it represents joke, yeah. the 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 downfall of Charlie you got it with a uh, with an umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done. Uh Obi Wan. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground, Anakin. You're underestimating my power, Obi-Wan. Dude, no. And that could have been the dialogue if Hassan was playing uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I guess. Dude, no. Yeah. I'm gonna ban you, Anakin. How long have you been a follower of mine? Yo, 20 years. <laughs> Get banned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're at the Jedi Knight rank, not even Master. He's like, oh. Oh, the new Master. You're, you even got uh, you even got uh, Jedi Council membership <laughs> for like yep. seven minutes. You can't even be a master. Hassan admitting he knows the problem but still does it has no turn has now turned it from him being ignorant to bad faith to malicious. He's all of those. Yeah, he is all of those. He is just he's a bad person. A lot of people we cover are just stupid. He's like. Uh, but he's just like a bad person. He's got a lot of awareness for what he's doing, fortunately. Him explaining this makes him banning Snafu so much worse. Snafu tried pointing out this to him nicely, vis-a-vis -vis JJ's or Jay's X's video, and he chided him as an idiot. Turns out he banned him because he felt called out by Snafu. Oh, for sure. I don't, I don't think, think he's it, ever banned I don't think somebody. It matters, uh, well, I, I don't think it matters how nicely you put it with him. Um, any level of dissent or criticism is just r responded to very negatively. In which case, yeah. it might be worthwhile to just be as vindictive. <laughs> wow. I, like, I don't know. I guess it's just, um, it doesn't seem to matter how nice you are to him. Like, it, he'll respond negatively to criticism of any kind, so. I would know. say it encourages you to be as clever as possible, so he doesn't even know that he's being insulted. Yeah, maybe. Um, like turn it into a bit of an ex uh, a, a bit of an experiment in terms of writing. See what you can craft as like insults that slip through that he just doesn't even realize are like slights against him. What he does learned... strike me as the person who is almost too dumb to insult a lot of the time. Well, it's it's kind of um. Mark damn, Twain I don't want to I don't want to keep wheeling out the Mark Twain quote. Yeah, but but it's, it's it kind of is um. I think that uh. I think did we that, just think of Mark Twain for two different reasons? We totally did. Because you're thinking about the beating in uh, the, with the experience, whole arguing yeah. with stupid people. And I'm thinking Mark Twain was so clever, but Hassan is so stupid, he wouldn't even realize he was being insulted, which would frustrate Mark so, Twain. Something that uh, 
Yeah, well, something that I find interesting is um, what what people would insult someone else for probably it's it's going to stem from something that they wouldn't want to be right so like if you call someone stupid as an insult it probably means that you value your own intelligence or intelligence in general and so in a certain sense it's like oh well you'd be really upset if you got called stupid but someone else might not someone else might not really give a shit how smart or stupid people think they are yeah they might not so there's got there's got to be something else right so like in the case of Hassan, it's like, well, I don't know, like, what, what is the thing that actually upsets him? What is it that he really values in terms of a core? Is it a perception? Is it, like, just simply the means of... Is it simply just accruing wealth for his own sake, you know, as opposed to actually being politically consistent or principled or, you know, whatever? I assume I he doesn't he, like being he called stupid. He wants to be loved. Yeah, he probably he, doesn't he like wants... being called stupid. He doesn't like it, no. I think it's more that what he desires is to be loved, and he doesn't really it doesn't really matter to him what the reason is or if the things being said about him I are guess true. I, I guess that's what I mean then. It's like an effective insult against him would not be to point out how hypocritical he is on his political positions. It would just be calling him stupid or like lazy or I don't know, a hack or something as opposed to actual pointed criticism of his process. Well, remember one of the most angry he ever got was when like someone in his followers was like, you're not Doing, you're not good enough at debating like trans issues. Yeah, to do yeah. it. Like that really fucking infuriated him. Yeah, so call him stupid, and that seems to be the thing that really well, gets stupid. Him angry. But in regards to, so if he said like, "Wow, you're stupid on, um, I don't know, a very specific political issue," he might be like, "Oh yeah, oh, whatever." Yeah, but when right. you say it on trans issues, I think that would really piss him off because he sees himself as quite the trans hero. Like, well, uh, just if you call him stupid on hot button social issues, it seems yeah. to be the that will get him really yeah. riled, up, riled up. So, like, if you say to him, you really don't understand, like, race relations in the United States, that'd probably Ooh, piss him yeah, off. that would piss him off. So, you know, all of those sort of topics. But if you said, hey, you know, Hassan, I don't think you have a really good understanding of, like, fiscal intervention during <laughs> the economic yeah. recession or something, like, that's not going to be very effective. Yeah, he'd probably say boring. something like, you know, I got, I have general knowledge. I don't have specified knowledge on that. I do the best I can. I don't think I was that bad. But, yeah, if you went Which, for something that he's got it, pride in. <laughs> Yeah. And what we learned with the, the recent coverage was that he's moved now to just being like, he needs to find out who you're arguing in favor of against him, and then he'll accuse you of being manipulated, like brainwashed into doing it. Like, uh, <laughs> remember, he's, he kept repeating, it's like, you're doing exactly what they want. This is what Jay wants. Right, so, so basically, if you present people who are opposed to you as unwitting uh, participants in the schemes yeah. of somebody who you politically hate. That'll be a good way to turn them. Because you don't want to be a useful idiot, which I guess is pretty funny to, like, you know, <laughs> like, as a, as a thing in his case. Yeah, he's got the but, whole clout goblin thing and... Yeah. yeah. He said, I think that's the new... In a world where every interaction that you have has to be framed through the lens of what does this person want to extract from me? Well, because he can't trust... He doesn't trust anybody, I don't think. Truly, right. Which He's ready. He, I don't know. Yeah, I. Uh, Genuinely, if you're in that environment all the time. I don't know if we've yeah. talked about it. I know we've talked about a lot of different things about the nature of starting up like a career on online. But one of the things you really do need is people you can trust. Um, it can be tough out there, you know. Well, it does seem like it's especially not in his position. I, well, yeah, especially it's it's the common dilemma, right? Of people who get incredibly wealthy as they start to not know whether or not anybody even likes them anymore, or if it all just stems from money. Um, and it's probably the same once you reach a level of fame, right? If you're incredibly famous and all of these people want to hang out with you and talk to you, it's like, do you, do you like me, or do you just think that I you, that I'm useful in advancing your uh, interests? You know. Mm -hmm. That probably is a shitty place to be in, but I mean, I don't know, it's hard to feel bad for him when he screams at people and tells them they're like, that they're worthless and that their parents hate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're banned for not hating your life. <laughs> like, I don't know. You seem <laughs> oh, like, yeah. a, you seem like you, a bad person, you You're know? hating your life then, working class, Andy. <laughs> Fucking hell. What is it, working class Andy? Well, it's just because Andy is the, is the thing that you add on. You know, Wikipedia Andy. I, I don't know what it means to be a working class Andy. Shouldn't he be your... I thought you are an advocate. Well, for I mean, he... Uh, yes, Andy. yes. Yeah. Except when you insult him, in which case, toil in perpetual uh, extraction of wealth by, by the well, rich. Really, 
turned on Hungarians like instantly the second oh, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. his opponent was, uh, was a Hungarian. This is like holy shit. It's, yeah. Like holy crap, man. Just like, and what was that? Laughing about how if there was a nuclear war, he would be fine in LA. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and then it would be hung Hungary that would get wiped off the face of the earth. <laughs> Like, it's oh, yeah, such really a clown it. person, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, at least he didn't ban the artist for clout chasing. Oh, he probably came close. No, he just told them, yeah, he he, he probably had his mouse hovering over that button. <laughs> just it's, like, the, mm. it's the biggest shortcut on his computer, just a big hammer. <laughs> Easiest fucking he W do... ever to give that artist some money for the shirt you're wearing with their art on it. Yeah, Easiest especially thing. when... You're not exactly short of change, you know. We'll be, yeah, you got plenty of The awesome of money move to, to be like, link your PayPal email in chat right now, and if anyone else feels this person, you know, deserves a few money, donations for the work they've done, the go right ahead. And then you when can very the publicly the give shirt. them like two hundred dollars or something, and be like, yeah, mm -hmm. thanks so much for the artwork, and you know, just remember to support artists. But instead, the person who stole the artwork gets your money. It's just like. Fuck me, and he couldn't put two and two together. Right. Instead, he was just outraged at the suggestion. <laughs> and then the artist paid with a retweet, though, so. hmm. Yeah. It's it's literally paid with exposure. It's exposure box. Yeah, no, they Which... tweeted, like, buying a burger with exposure or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a bit. It's, it's like, yeah, it's not worthless exposure, but it certainly, you know, doesn't translate into legal tender. Yeah. That exposure is gonna taste really good on my dinner plate today. Yeah. What? Pay the workers? Stalin above. They eat and sleep? What more do they need? <laughs> oh my. Exposure pays the bills for exotic dances. What's the thing? Hassan needs the money. Okay. He's. Couldn't just be giving it away like that. It'd be ridiculous. Um, Hassan is like the mirror universe of EFAP. I mean, in some ways. Um. Because the, the way reality. that, like, he reacts to everything is the fucking opposite of what we do. Well, we'll try to do anyway. We try to, um... We don't ban the people for being assholes or disagreeing. Yeah. We're like... We try to read them and be we like, alright. Um... Yeah, so th this is, there's a couple of opposites, I guess. Uh, when I pay with public exposure, I get arrested. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. How unfair. Yeah. Someone should find Hassan saying that about the artist and then send them the clip. Oh, well, the, the point of the clip that I showed no. is that the artist knew about it. Like The artist was there, yeah. yeah in his chat and then the, the tweets afterward. Yeah. Um, I want to join their revolution so that one day when Hassan gets put against the wall with the bourgeoisie, I may get to take the shot. <laughs> oh my god. Calm down. Uh, JK, Kappa, Flash S. They, they put all the jokes oh. signals in there. Kappa face. What, what, was, what was the face? Hmm? Oh, uh... The face. Uh, I know you're talking about this fucking guy from the... the yeah. Twin Perfect is the name. What, what did he... Fuck. Smug Ross. That's it. Smug Ross. Smug Ross. That's, That's it. the one. That's the one. That's Famous the one. being. Smug whenever Ross. you see Smug Ross, I don't mean it. And even when it's not there. <laughs> I also did. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> the man who wouldn't answer a question. Nope. Yeah. You can't. Don't, don't ask. Don't, I can't answer a question. Then I might be tied down to having an actual position. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to have a position. I wouldn't want to have to defend a position, or even act as if I have one. EFAP chat would slaughter Hassan's chat, it would be more one-sided than the Mexican-American war. Uh, yeah, but they just do emotes. They would, they would fire- There's no real engagement in conversations or yeah. anything. There's emotes, and then there's haha -ha, 11 months. See your mm, person who probably yeah. thought they had a sense of community here. I'll never stop framing, because that's what happens. People probably think they're in a community. And they get turned on instantly because it's not a community, really. <laughs> I think we legit actually have a community here of us, like because our, our chat with they were they, they had they felt revulsion at the. Concept well, I mean, I'd that say that the appeal to like that. to the the commute sense of community just be like fan art and stuff and engagement with the conversations. Yeah. 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 As opposed to just haha. -ha I mean, oftentimes, the anniversary chat. episodes are kind of like a. 
celebration of the EFAP sort of community. Oh yeah, we definitely wouldn't be the same without him. Mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't be doing fucking 30 hour streams with you guys uh, if, <laughs> if it were just us. I'd be like, yeah, let's break him up a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, what of the day is, Hassan is a piece of shit. Bad but true. Oh. Um, yeah, I it guess was the so. quote attributed to? <laughs> That's just a quote well, of the so day. I got a little bit confused because it said sad but true rags. But maybe you said it and then they're saying sad but true rags? Sad, maybe it was like sad but true comma rags. Yeah, I think this supposed like to be sad a Sad but true rags. Maybe. Ah. Yeah. Uh... Many of the things I say are sad but true. <laughs> Was it please this release the, show. the video? I'll pay you with exposure. I did release it. It was called Hassan Pika Man of Steel. <laughs> the excellent name. But yeah, I can't remember who exactly, exactly came up with it, but it, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's good. It's, it's good three layers you. of fun, fun shit, and that's the best kind of name. That is a more clever name than that man deserves. Batman? That, that man. man. Oh. That man. And he's pointing at some dude walking down the street. And it's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> we need your help, that man. Killer Croc is robbing the <laughs> Gotham Bank. Can you stop him? No? Yes, no. you can. You're that man. <laughs> that's what, that's what every normal person's super <laughs> sounds... name is. That's a great, great for a couple of sketches. I think that bad. That's his uh, yeah. superhero name. It's like, um, what, what's the one from South Park? Uh, oh, Captain Hindsight. Captain Hindsight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, when he's just like, you, you know, that that should have that that fire escape should have been moved a couple <laughs> a couple yeah. of meters down. It gets regulation. Well. But, uh, my work here is done. I'm off to find others in need. And then the firefighter, like, God bless you, Captain Hindsight! God bless you! <laughs> this looks like a job for that guy. Ah, he run away. <laughs> He's just pointing. That guy's just <laughs> no! a normal but what, what if it's always, yeah. every time you just point to just whoever, they are that guy. Yeah. They take off this shit. They're like, yeah, I am that guy with a T. <laughs> with a T. <tea. laughs> Drop for that guy. Ah. They're actually always hey, the hero. That guy. Well, it. maybe it's just in a universe where whenever someone declares that guy is there, that person's imbued with power. Yeah. Hmm, maybe. You're onto something there, I think. Hmm. That would make oh, complete sense. Um, maybe that guy's powers is he can give powers to other people when they're needed, right? So he don't have he doesn't have any powers himself other than when there's a crisis. He looks at someone else, that guy, and then he gives them powers and he says, you can do this. You got this. You're that honest. guy now. You are now that guy. That guy. I'm going to drink in the freezer. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Name it Hassan the, the uh, um, uh. I mean, yeah, I could have. No, I, I like the ring of that, but it's not. Well, I like the sentiment of it, but I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it is super. Yeah, like it doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah. Hassan, socializing exposure. I mean, it's not bad as a name. Hmm. Every word a pause. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose that's longer than every frame, so. Uh, more time given. Any. Um. Hiked to the summit of a mountain overlooking my town while listening. Over 100 pounds lost, 50 to mm. go. Nice. Good nice. job, man. Keep Very it up. good. Oh, I wonder how they're doing. This was a year ago. Yeah, Let us man, know we'll be... if you are still a listener of EFAP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we got... I lost so much weight, I died. Got, I, I think you guys stop. will remember. We got we got some movie suggestions because of the Nuggy thing happening. Got, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. 12 years of Nuggy. Black Nuggy down. Lord of the Nuggies, no turn of the chair. Hassan Wars, the last Nuggy. Nug E, as in Wally. <laughs> Wally. <laughs> uh, Nuggy versus Chairzilla. I can see that happening, yeah. Enemy at the Nuggies. The Rise of Chairwalker. 
Sonpai the good, the bad, and the nugly. I guess these were actually suggestions. I feel like enemy at the nuggies is uh, a missed opportunity. If it was nuggies at the gates, you yeah. know, like and then you imagine the, the, the scene where they're charging through like the square, and then it's a bunch of nuggets on machine guns. That's the way to do it. And then you got um, it was Jude Law like sniping some nuggies. <laughs> they're just around the place. The Russians Sing. are charging in. They have like forks. <laughs> like, or they Ketchup. have like barbecue sauce from McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. Then one of you drops the fork. The other piece. The other one, yeah. <laughs> uh, the dishonored nuggy. A son at the gates. A story of workers and nuggies. I imagine we'll get more of I these. I like uh, Nuggy Hawk down, or it was oh, it was Black Nuggy down, where like the helicopters, <laughs> the Black Hawk helicopters and nuggets. <laughs> I like the the rotors are just like ten nuggets strung together. Yeah. So it's just a nugget with nugget propellers, <laughs> and then as it's falling down, all these chickens flying everywhere. Um. I'll give you a trilogy. The Nuggy Awakens, The Last Transformative, and The Rise of Pika. Uh, both, yeah. Do that. Mm. Uh, there's a target in Hitman 2 that tells an artist he's paying him an exposure. You can disguise yourself as the artist no. and kill him hilariously. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh... Some other titles I saw from chat. Once Upon a Time in Armenian Genocide to Dial. Triumph of the Nuggies <laughs> and How to Train Your Nuggy. I like how How to Train Your Nuggy is so much more chill than the other two. <laughs> it's like the yeah. Other, the other thing I like about the, the, some of these are just they're just so subtle. Oh, what do yeah. they mean? I wonder. I have no clue what they could be referencing. Uh, where are we? Hassan is the kind of guy to get stressed when the sun goes down, worried that it won't come back up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining <laughs> somebody funny. watching this sun dip below the horizon with oh, their Oh god, head guys, head. guys, guys, are you seeing ah! this? Oh! He's doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> All the sweat's do do? flying off of his head as the sun is disappearing. <laughs> no! No! Like, Hassan has done it before and he's like, yes, and I was just as scared then. Past, past performance is not indicative of future results. I read that on Wall yep. Street Bets. Well, it's, I mean, it's actually true, but, like, but in this <laughs> maybe case, not with the sun. Well, you know, it, it will be with the sun one day. One day it'll get one day. Bad. One day. Well, I mean, it may well be that while well, I guess the problem is that half the planet will be able to see it if it like just suddenly disappears. Mm. I have no chair and I'm a scream. Wouldn't it be stream? Oh wait, yeah, they said stream. Actually, my bad. Uh, Raiders of the Stolen Art. Yeah, that works. <laughs> uh, where did you learn to steal? On a content farm? Pretty much. How to succeed in business Zod's without even trying. Back. What's coming back? <laughs> Zod's coming back. He is. It's gonna be great. <laughs> uh... Reminds me of how, like, the sentiment that you know, like, like he'll come back and maybe he'll be better, but regardless, yeah. like, the original performance will just be really praised and just be like, guys. It was really, like, funny. Cringy. <laughs> <laughs> I will find him. The, 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 we reference it, like, all the time as one of the best examples of just a villain being fucking stupid, but when he shows the mountain <laughs> of skulls to convince what? Clark, glad, what, what are you doing? Yeah. And then not only to have a mountain of skulls, but to have him submerged in them. <laughs> this will this will convince him. Maybe if I found you in this mountain of skulls, it'll show you that I'm actually the a good super guy. Super bad, super bad in a mountain of skulls. <laughs> he, I just, he goes home that night. He's like, I just don't get it. He just he didn't seem to understand. <laughs> 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 uh, do you want me to die? I need Jay's stolen content. Yeah, I know. Funny fair. Jay keeps people alive. The power. They call him Boss. Boss Nuggy. Congrats if you get the reference. Hmm. Boss Nuggy? Boss Baby? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Could be a lot of things, honestly. 
Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 3 Nuggy Flag. <laughs> uh, Praise the Cosmic Chicken. Hi, Blessed Frogman. Hi, Skull on Wheels. Hi, Rax. Sorry, Mootle. Hi there. Hey. Oh, Mootle. Hello. Hey, should we tell the people of the past in the most clear and concise manner about the alien threat, where we come from, what are their weaknesses, and how effectively to fight them, and with what weapons are most effective in fighting them? No. That's, uh, we're on Tomorrow War now, I guess. Oh, god, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was like, you're talking about the Flash, but That's yeah, gonna yeah. test my memory. Uh, oh, that film, I have movie. forgotten the fuck out of it. It was terrible. Wow. Rags and I had to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I thought you saw it the one time. Shocking. Yeah, it, this might surprise you, but it actually doesn't get better on a repeat view. What? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, because, uh, I was doing Snyder Cutism, so I couldn't, uh have the time but I'm glad you guys watched what what is essentially an incredible film. It is an incredible film. Um in fact it is it is not credible. The most unrealistic aspect of the movie with the time travel and aliens is that a bunch of normies don't have any friendly fire or accidental suicide. Well I mean yeah, a lot of them insane. die. In assorted they, they ways. They die before they have the chance to commit suicide. Yeah. But yeah there's plenty of friendly fire incidents that would happen with everyone just spraying bullets like that not knowing what the fuck they're doing. So a classic case of the enemy has plot armor until the good guys need to win. Pretty much, yeah. Remember they go from like, all their bullets are completely ineffective to starting to actually mow them down. Like decapitate them and things, which is just like, what the fuck? No, you guys don't understand. It's a super meta commentary on the morality of young Americans involvement in Vietnam and the Gulf War. Also, Fringloid. What Simpsons is this like? Also, Hyrax. <laughs> what Hi. Simpsons episode is the Tomorrow War like? Yeah, that's an easy question. Um, I think we all know. Damn, like, I'm pretty sure there is something that's, like, really apt, but I... Hmm. Because it's not, it's not the Homer just gone back with the toaster. It's not really applicable. Um. Damn, I'm not sure. I don't know what I would pick as, like, the Simpsons version of the Tomorrow War. No, man, I got nothing. For some reason, I, f I feel more like the Futurama episode where they go to the planet with the balls. Like, that, even though it doesn't have any time travel. I could, I could see I how you'd like that, that one, more. though, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, those enemies were very much unlike, you know, <laughs> they might as well be aliens. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that would never not be funny. <laughs> oh. uh, morning, Mauler, Mootle, and Frongo from Adelaide. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Hello. What up? Also, uh, watching the new EFAPs whilst catching up on the backlog. Good up the keep work, lads. I will. Good yes. up to keep work. I feel like you got so many words Good there. Good keep up. work. I think I actually mixed them up there. It wasn't even their fault. But you know what? I understood oh, really? anyway. You 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 misinterpreted their message. Well, that's your one. I job. misread it, but I interpreted it the way it was supposed oh, to be interpreted. I right? suppose that's. But nevertheless, the goal the goal is to read it accurately. I think they're gonna sue the show at this point when they find that out now. Oh no. Like, that was you shouldn't not... have put that idea in their head. We'll you use their know. super Try chat to, to hire on. lawyers against them. Cruel <laughs> irony. <laughs> and during the court case when we're reading them out, they reread one of them wrong, and they're like, I want to sue you. We're like, oh, fuck. Fuck's sake. Is the Tomorrow War bad? Yes. Yes, it's horrible. It's awful. <laughs> it's, um, it's, I'm pretty sure it's we gave it a one. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's it one of the worst. Though, I will say, a movie came out recently that really fucked with our, uh, <laughs> Oh, you know. boy. It, <laughs> it would be real the... nice to just get, like, yeah. a big budget film that comes out where you can just be like, you know what, that was, like, good. Just good, good, good. Like, the only caveats being, you know, the relatively minor things, but at its core, we had a really strong narrative here. Yeah, God, I, I would love for that to be something. Here and there, and yeah, it could have been a little better here, but yeah. But like, great. this was a great effort, like a, a legitimately great effort. Oh yeah, yeah good oh. job, guys. Mm. You did it. Starship Troopers did the shit. What happened? <laughs> what with movies? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh. 
Doctor Troopers did the shoot the bugs here scene. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they're talking about how the, nobody was taught how to do anything to these bugs. Uh, old aliens. Battle. Uh, I remember it was. Uh, you re you guys remember the film Battle Los Angeles? I do. I didn't see it, but I know of it. I do actually. Yeah. There was a scene in that where they were trying to figure out how to kill the aliens because they're different, and so it's like they had a scene <laughs> where they're like, "How how we how we kill you?" While they got like a couch one, and then they figure it out. But I mean, in this case, you already know, so why wouldn't you tell them where to shoot? It's yeah. And where was it? It was under their necks, right? I think so. Well, it was yeah, like a weak spot. it was it was the uh, it was like their chest and their neck or something. Yeah. And luckily, they used targets that were in no way to practice. The, the little practice they got, they used targets that were in no way even close <laughs> to being representative of what they would actually be shooting at. So, <laughs> because of that, course. Uh, yeah, that whole kinda, movie. Mm -hmm. oh. It is one of the dumbest films. It really is. Um, I don't know why this was sent in, but someone said, I bet that some Nazis thought the Holocaust was fun. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Hey, Mola, when is all of the foreshadowing of your next hot take gonna pay off? I've been waiting for months now. I don't even know what one I would've one? been baiting at that point. Yeah. yeah. There's still several. I hold them all in a big chest. <laughs> if you knew about all of them, you would no longer think me a, uh, a, a man explode. of repute. Mola hot take chest. It's just, yeah. it sits in a dungeon. It's covered in, like, webs. It's, uh, it's terrifying. Yeah. whenever you get close to it, the lighting dims and the spooky mm -hmm. music kicked up. And then you hear if some you faint screams the... in the background, just like, Ma! Ma! <laughs> like, as you get closer to it. If you were to find yourself in the EFAP secret vault of hot takes, it would be like gazing upon the face of God. You just mm. vaporize. Even we don't yeah. venture it's into that scary. chest. It's scary, it's scary yeah, down there. It is scary down there in the, the, the realm of EFAP hot takes. We do not venture down there often. Some no, of you aren't ready a, for them. You're not ready. It's, like I said, um, I'm barely ready Sometimes I wonder if them. we're ready. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is very much like, again, more movie references. You open that thing up, your faces melt and explode. If you're not, you, you can't look, all right? Don't when do it. When we did the, the hot take stream, where we had three big hot takes all at once, that was, that was oh, just yeah. a test. That was like... Really small well, missile were, going off, but well, yeah, because that was uh the the three was there was Bojack, there was Theo on the Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. What was the third one? It was me with a TV show of some kind, I think. It was, um, but the I can't new TV what. show was it? I don't know. I don't know. Damn. Well, because it would have had to have lined up with when we finished watching. This was a while ago, because like we watched Bojack in 2020. Fuck, that means we watched, like, Buffy and Angel in 2019, did we? No, we watched we watched Buffy and Angel in 2020 when COVID... It was, like, the, the first couple of months of COVID. God, I can't believe how and then, long ago that was. Yeah. Jeez. That was a while ago, yeah. I know, yeah. Time's really jumped. Yeah. Kind of scary. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what the, the third one was, but, I'm, yeah. All I remember is I'm pretty sure it was me with a TV show of some kind, and I had to go through... Why would poopy? Um, well, hold on. Let me. I'll just look it up. Uh, in Bojack. Uh oh. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Was it the boys? Think, oh, it was the boys. Well, season I think two. The boys season two was fucking awful. Yeah. I that think that was. Up. It was a reveal because then we did a full stream for it. <laughs> the boys season two, holy fuck! Don't worry, it's, <laughs> it's, it's at the point now. It's fully accepted to be bad. Nobody has a problem with that anymore. Yeah, but it took to like episode seven. <laughs> yeah, we we got like, in trouble for a while with our take on that. Yeah, well, we just like we did with Mandalorian. Episode one, we were very nervous at the end of episode one, and then episode two and three, it's like, ah, it's, yeah, it's over. It's, uh, it's like, done. We're finished. I don't know how many people even in our audience remember how much trouble we get in for our initial we takes. We got tons of trouble. Yeah. Remember the Mandalorian stuff? Yeah, our community were fucking mad yeah. at us for we being mean crazy, to Mando. Because well, it wasn't until uh, the end of season two that people started to turn on that show. Specifically, it was season two episode five episode. and six that's where it turns if you watch because i edited all the menus so i remember the comments had turned at that point what happened in episode five and six again? five was what ahsoka um but i don't think it was right. ahsoka that did it because funnily enough that's one of the better episodes i think we said that's like probably the best episode in the season it's more so Maybe the, it was episode four that started to turn people it's just what a matter of four? the episodes were bad right but like 
you yeah. get the one, you can, you can just do that thing. We're just like, oh, come on. It's okay. Like, yeah, okay. That's kind of silly. That's kind of silly. But like, yeah, come on. And then another episode. And, and then like, it just keeps adding on. Uh, yeah. yeah you find it harder and harder reached. until you're just like, you know what? That was fucking dumb, actually. You know what? I'm actually getting annoyed, yeah. too. And you're like, uh-oh. There you go. Yep. Because um, if you remember, everyone really liked the giant sand dragony thing, whatever it was, and we were like, Why? that was really stupid, though. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, have you ever heard the comedy of Darth Pika the Vile? I thought not. Not a story the Sims would have told you. But unfortunately, we're familiar with it. Um. Have you ever heard... Oh, uh, got here late for the pet question. A wombat. I a guess. wombat is a pet. You're not allowed to have, um... It's like Australian animals really as pets. Hmm. Um, a wombat would be a fun little pet, though. They're just a big old little ball. You know? Hmm. Big old ball of, of happiness. Yeah. These white spikes can't be talking out by Earth's finest militaries, but to do scan fist fight one in the snow. Why? Sorry, what? I think that was English. They're talking about how finest militaries of Earth are defeated by these things, but oh, like Chris Pratt's yeah. fighting one in the snow. Yeah. Fists. Well, I mean, Earth's military beats these things easy. Yeah. Uh, why is Hassan wearing a veteran's hat? I think he said it was supposed to be ironic or something. I don't know. Asshole. It's ironic because it's it's ironic because he's not a veteran. That's I legit I can't remember what he said anymore, but I remember it being really unsatisfying. I didn't lie to you. I was being ironic. Someone is disagreeing with the hosts. W W hate. Oh, what would Hassan do? Uh. Ban them or create. <laughs> well, I think ban you know. Them. I think you know. Yeah, we, we just. They must be destroyed. Also, hail EFAP. Hail. Oh, hail. More, the military's leadership is barely habitable. Go out into an alien invasion, see how long competent leaders last. Heh <laughs> Gotcha, long man. Well, hey, yeah, the, the, we had a bit of pushback for shitting on Tomorrow War. There were some people who were a fan of that movie. Uh, yeah, because it was what non-political. The fuck. That's what like, I've heard. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I just don't care well, if they're just, really shit. It's, it's, <laughs> it's shit. It's garbage. Like I don't care. Um, can we stop with them making the military a gaggle of incompetent lobotomites in monster movies? No, we can't because then the monsters lose. No. And then the plot yeah. fails because <laughs> we we have to underestimate the competency of human beings. I'm just saying, like, Remember with what I hear from you guys about Halo, it just sounds like we were defeated, fair and square sort of thing. Well, because the, the, the thing in the games is that the Covenant are an overwhelming force. There's more of them, they have better ships. Um, the Spartans are better than, like, any ground forces that the Covenant can muster, but the Covenant have much larger ground forces. So it really is, like, this battle that's very heavily stacked against humanity, which is mm. the reason why they nearly lose... It's only Halo that, like, basically allows humanity to win because they can... It's... Once that happens, it just causes a lot of problems that, um... That can't really be accounted for by the Covenant very well, like the Flood and, um... And, of course, that they're so focused on the Great Journey and as soon as they find Halo, it's, like, commit full full force to, like, tapping into its secrets that kind of causes their unraveling. Um... And the fact that they broke apart and that the, the Elites left the Covenant. So it's, like... Yeah, they are an overwhelming force, and they still are an overwhelming force. The reason why they fracture is because of these other things that start to happen that um, cause them to de their demise. Yeah. Uh, and as for the Flood, it's like, yeah, Master Chief. It's, whereas in the show, it's kind of like, you guys are super... Because I was thinking about it with Episode 5. It's like, okay, so you need to get the artifact out, and the frigate's gone. You need to get it to a ship. Are you not really concerned that they're just going to blow up that ship? Um, might it be a better idea to actually hunker down and keep the artifact, uh, locked in there and then to guard it rather than doing an offensive battle? Might it be a good idea to have the ship fly over to the, to the cave instead of taking the artifact through enemy lines and up to the ship? 
You know, it's like also, you make it a how lot did of you get surprised. How did the covenant surprise you? Well, well, so the thing is, is that the covenant can surprise in a sense when it's like a slip space rupture is detected. But I mean, there's still yeah, you know there's, there's still some time. Level of time. There's time between leaving slip space in a cruiser and getting your forces amassed to fight on the ground. Um, it might well cause problems for whatever cruiser is in, but like as soon as you see the rupture, it's like okay, there's a cruiser and. The battle doesn't happen a minute after. Um, you, you don't slip space into like orbit, you know? You, you or like a, you you do it like above orbit, but not like on the surface of the planet. It, it doesn't follow. It's like, and man, if Chief had woken up like a minute later, <laughs> damn, you'd be in a bit of trouble, you know? He wakes up like five seconds before the Covenant arrived. We were talking uh, about the, the the super chatter with incompetent militaries required for the plot. When we watched Army of the Dead, no. Oh, our God. first instinct after the um kind of like the opening the opening scene was that the zombies were bulletproof yeah. because <laughs> it because that was the more the most reasonable explanation based off of how insanely incompetent all of those guys with rifles were that oh oh the the zombies are bulletproof oh okay when it turns out no that no, the zombies they're not. are not bulletproof they're at all not. it's just <laughs> we we require incompetence to an extreme degree in order to make this work. It was like when they dropped that paratrooper into a field of zombies. <laughs> oh it's like, so what, what was the thought process here? Why did you do this to this guy? Why did you Why are kill we him? paratrooping on our own soil? I don't understand. We talk about fucking like visuals zombies. coming before the writing. That's just, that's all that is. Yeah. The most incompetent military in the history of forever is Army of the Dead. It has to be. The one Marvel show I watched was the one you, Dumbo, didn't do a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown of. Uh, why? Uh, right. Well, then he says, why Falcon the Winter Soldier and WandaVision, but not Loki? Did I mean, we, do a full, we didn't do a full <clears throat> breakdown of Loki, did we? Or? we well, it, I think it took six hours. We talked through Loki, but we didn't do a scene-by-scene. Oh, scene. Right. I think we did scene-by-scene scene for the other two. No, wait, we didn't do it for WandaVision, did we? We didn't do it for WandaVision. We did it for the finale. Because I remember we, we Falcon the Winter Soldier was a comprehensive fucking breakdown. We went yes, hardcore yeah. into that. And we didn't even want to do one until episode, episode three. Four. It was four. four. Episode four was the one. That oh, was when four. the chill thing. Yeah, where we yeah. uh Zemo just escapes that episode, but everything else is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh Zemo. What are they gonna do to you, buddy? Don't even wow, matter time. he'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Sad face. Play DDLC. Perhaps one day. But, uh, yeah, we didn't do at all, uh, Hawkeye. I was. We didn't watch. Yeah, well, well episode none one, of us have seen but, the and, season yet, so. Yeah. And I don't want to. Hmm. Uh, though, thanks to the hard work, I know 150 is going to be big. Well, it, it were a Chongus. It was. Uh,. I hate films with a queen when killing it defeats the whole army. It's lazy writing and results in boring stories. Give me long strategy instead. I don't mind it. The the concept of you kill one, they all get wiped out. Um, but I, I can understand yeah, what you're I, saying. Like you you don't want that to just be the reveal and that's how they win in like the final episode or something. Yeah, there. It's more believable in different scenarios. The like for episode one, there's only one control unit, and if you'd blow that up, the entire army just turns off. Like I like Star Wars uh, or Phantom Menace. Yeah, right? that's yeah, was, uh, yeah, Phantom Menace. Like oh no, I guess Avengers, right? When you blow up the mothership or the Chitauri are dead. I think that one's weirder as well because the Chitauri seemed like they were flesh beings, not yeah. robots or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And there is that aspect of. Why? No, that's funny. But yeah, yeah, the the trope definitely often does not work like it needs to work. Yeah, when you have something like the Borg, I think people would maybe expect there's something you could do that would send a signal throughout a lot of them. Um, but there are some armies maybe, where you're just like, huh. Uh, or that's maybe the balancing act of you have a lot of... Um, uh, like, like the reason that the enemy is able to have so many cheap disposable units or whatever is because they're all just controlled from some distant, you know, something like that. You know? 
Well, I would say that the trade-off is that you get to make them unit like become one in a lot of ways, uh, but at the cost of the fact that you can disable them all with one keystroke sort of thing. Uh, which is a risk if someone gets into your systems. You know, there's there's ways to balance it and make it make more sense and feel more satisfying, I guess. Definitely. Um, do, what do you think Hassan's favorite flavor of chalk is? I think he'd like all of them. Blueberry. Hey, Mullen, as a Brit bong, maybe you can help. What setting do you use on your microwave to thaw out your tea bags? Thanks. Oh. Thaw out your tea bag. I think that's probably the most offensive thing you can say to a, a British person, especially English. You know, it's, it's it's incredible that YouTube would have allowed that level of a of a slur. But there we are. Uh, it seems that either the filmmakers thought any other idea aside from the one in the movie would be too complex for audiences, or they were too stupid themselves to think of a use for time travel in a war. Um, I, yeah, I don't know anything about the production team behind it, but I'm assuming they didn't care to really make things make sense. They were much more invested in just the concept, right? You fight a war in the future. Ain't that cool? Like, eh. There's, uh, there's, there's got to be a way to make that kind of thing work. This just isn't it. This isn't it. Oh yeah, it's like what we saw in that film is kind of like your friend's idea on a night out when he's drunk. He's like, we're gonna blah, 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 and says all that, and you're like, we could maybe turn that into something. Okay. And then you tell him that just as you're patting him on the back, saying it's time to go to bed. It's time to sleep. It's time yeah, to we'll we'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Maybe um, you have like the the aliens from the future who attacked us, they used some strange technology and something happened and it caused some sort of a time portal problem and said so something. You gotta you gotta work hard to mm -hmm. come up with that idea that make it even close to being plausible. I, uh, why people send this stuff in? It says Fuck Mary Kill Hitler, Atler, and George Floyd. Why? We're not answering that. Oh. Why White Spike? Should have called them Arctic assholes. Is that what they call them in the film, White Spikes? Yeah. I think okay. so, yeah. I know they fire stuff at people, right? That's probably why they're saying that. Fire Spikes people, if I remember. I, I, my memory's very weak on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I found Proto Karen in a film called Airport 77. Oh, all right. I wish I could help you. I don't know what that is. Uh, I bet Hassan's chat loves Filmento videos. Maybe. Filmento's a strange one. He is an odd boy. I actually have a lot of fun with Doom Eternal's platforming, except for some bollocks parts in the last level. Never played it. Um, I don't remember it super well. I didn't enjoy the platforming. Um, steal content or die trying? No, he wouldn't die trying. The second it actually compromises him in any way, shape, or form, he would stop. <clears throat> but nothing does, so why bother stopping? Alright, here we got a fuck Mary kill that relates to Buffy, so it's not gonna be answered just yet. One day though, maybe. I didn't see Tomorrow War and I found a plot hole from the premise. Why not just give the past advantage, uh, sorry, advanced tech so that they can spend 28 years getting more advanced for when the aliens arrive? I got no clue what rules they set out that means the fact that they're even there would just keep changing their future over and over again, you know? Yeah. I don't know how they made that makes sense. I don't think they did make that make sense. Because <laughs> isn't the big payoff in the whole movie that uh, they get a like a cure or, or a thing that can send back in the past and then they go and destroy the, the spaceship that they landed in? I don't know. Well, they they get the they get the cure virus right, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. made 
and then they bring it back to the past, and then the governments don't believe them. Oh, and yeah. so they have to go to the mothership themselves in the Arctic Gosh. and not tell anybody. That and the funny were. part is the cure doesn't even mean anything, because I just blow up the fucking <laughs> ship anyway. <laughs> I remember, it's yeah. So terrible plot. Yeah, because the, they so need to know bad. where the original ship landed, right? And then they're like... So they have to figure that it. out Let's when that's something up. everyone should know? Because it's, it's, they have no. to figure it out, yeah. It landed, a, it landed a long, long time ago. They, 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 they talked to the kid. It was a conspiracy yeah, the, theory kid in his class. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, that film's he, awful. And so they they, they knew it was in Russia. So they went to Russia, found it real quick. And they just kind of like go around <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah, they go around Siberia in a little fucking like in their little so snow like snowmobiles. And yeah. they just find it. And they just find it. Because of there. course In they Russia. Do. In Russia. Yeah. Not the world's largest country at all. Makes sense. Sabretooth Tiger versus Short Face Bear. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. What's a short faced bear? Yeah, pretty big, I think. A short faced bear. Arctodus. Okay. Or the North. Am oh, that's interesting because Arctodi are um, they're 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 enemies in some like MMOs and stuff. So a short nosed bear or hmm. short faced bear. Get you a picture here. Image, post this for you. It's kind of an odd one. It's the one, the one on the right, the one that. <laughs> yeah. I probably go with the bear. Uh, I think the bear. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the bear. Because I don't think that saber tooth tigers use their saber teeth to actually kill. I think that they would jump on prey, and then they would suffocate it. Uh, which was like kind of a, a long process, but it, it, but they couldn't actually. I don't think they could open their mouth. They can, I, I may be misremembering this, but I think one time when I was young, I was watching some like Discovery Channel thing about ancient beasts or whatever, and they, they, they couldn't. The, the fangs were too big for them to actually use to hunt and kill prey, or they couldn't use them. Like, they meant for intimidation, like that. Maybe it's like a like a for sexual selection or intimidation, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. I know there's. I think there's like a species of rodent that's similar in that the females will choose males based off of the size of their incisors. So that can lead to them progressively getting bigger and bigger to the point where it's actually detrimental. Yeah. The peacock is similar, where the sexual selection in the peacock is that the males are the ones that have the big ta tails. And females will generally mate with the male peacocks that have the biggest tails. And it's because if you have a very big tail as a peacock, it's tougher for you to escape from predators. You have to eat more to upkeep the tail. It's just more of a bother and more of a hassle. But if you're surviving and thriving with the big tail, then you must be a badass peacock. And I want to make babies with you because you are strong and amazing. So it's not actually an advantage that a certain trait... Uh, gives to the, the the animal that it has. It's just it's more impressive genetically that they can survive with it. Which may be the case for saber two tigers, but I'm not certain. I don't know too much about them. Yeah, you just reminded me of uh, every quote Anthony Hopkins has as Robert Ford in Westworld. One of them's about peacocks, and he says. Um, I read a theory once that the human intellect is like peacock feathers, just an extravagant display intended to attract a mate. All of art, literature, a bit of Mozart, William Shakespeare, Michelangelo, and the Empire State Building, just an elaborate mating ritual. Maybe it doesn't matter that we have accomplished so much for the basest of reasons, but of course, the peacock can barely fly. It lives in the dirt, pecking insects out of the muck, consoling itself with its great beauty. Where's that from? Westworld. Yeah, because I, I like that. This is it's it's, fucking it's a cool. Uh, every quote he has in season one is just stuff that makes me go, hmm. <laughs> what the fuck happened? Uh, the season four is coming out soon, apparently. And I was just like, who the fuck's yeah. watching that show anymore? Oh, I thought that show. I didn't know that show was still going. It I just is. never hear about it. Nobody talks about it, really. Kind of like Game of Thrones. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, nobody talks about Game of Thrones anymore, Jesus. I think, yeah, one of the opening lines he has in the show is, Evolution forged the entirety of sentient life on this planet using only one tool, the mistake. Is, uh... That's good shit. Interesting to think about. Kind of, yeah, evolutionary-wise. Uh, uh, mutations are... The vast majority of mutations are certainly neutral, and even between positive and negative, there are going to be more negative mutations than positive ones, so in that sense, it's all a mistake whenever genetic information is copied from the parent to the child, so... Pretty much, mistakes can, uh, every once in a while, just good enough to give them an edge. Westworld Season 1 is totally a thing where I would be like, it would be fun for us to watch that, to go through its good things, and then talk about how it kind of fucks up toward the end, and then pretend that no other seasons exist. Like, there is just no fucking point in going any further, because it's not even... <laughs> Over, yeah. I, I just... Oh, it's such a mess. And it's funny because most people adore the first season and kind of like the second season and think the third season's terrible, but I have friends who stuck it through and season two was the one where they had to, they had to ditch. Uh, apparently all over the place, but yeah. Um, so no, it's worth it just to hear him say all those quotes. Um, if the world will end on December 12th... 3234 at 2318.12. If you time travel back in time and spend several days training people, the world will still end then, so you have no reason to rush the training. What is this movie? Dude, I'm fucking confused by everything you just said anyway. Well, the film said that the timelines were running concurrently. That was like their lo logic for how you can't really leverage the past effectively. The timelines run at the same time for some reason. What does that mean? It means that the like as that uh essentially the point that they uh that they went back to originally is like in sync with the future. So one day from like I don't know t January first, twenty twenty, will be equivalent to one day in twenty forty, and then they'll run together. So the next day will be the next day in the future. That they're like paired, and so you can't really leverage the past effectively because of that. Because it means you can't, like, travel to... Every every time you jump to the future, will always be further ahead in the future than uh, than it was before. So, I don't know why that's how it works. They just say that that's how it works. Okay. I I don't know. I can't... I'm sorry. I can't tell you how that film works. It's bad. Celestial Apex Massive. True. Reminder, when you guys discovered that weird floating alien in The Last Jedi. Oh, I remember that. The, the balloon thing. It looks horrifying. That's some early EFAT meme right there. Times. Mola, play Mole Warfare 3 like it's the Tomorrow War. Oh. I wanna. What does it mean to play Mole Warfare 3 like it's the Tomorrow War? I actually don't know. I just don't wanna. Uh, Russia should have drawn a strike to explain why. Explain why what? I don't know what that's referring to. So I'm late. I guess Hassan wearing the Korean vet hat wasn't for aesthetic. Jesus Christ. Again, I can't remember what he said was why he was wearing it. Hassan Pika, you can take my content, but you'll never take my nuggies. He's got quite a supply of them. Yeah. Man loves his nuggies. 400 million plus non-military owned guns in the US alone. Now add all the other countries. We ain't losing. No, of course not. We wouldn't lose those things. Humans are really good at fucking killing stuff. We'd find a way. Especially when you tough. consider what the origin of the... Um, like, the they all came ship. from one place and then spread outwards, you know? Mm. Oh, well, a million things. it reminds me of a quiet place. Like, you, you want me to believe the government never would have figured out their weakness? Like, no way. I don't believe you. Oh, I took this little girl messing around with a uh, hearing aid to do it. It's like, no. It seems that they hear really well. Maybe some kind of a sonic yeah, weapon? Yeah, that's the first no, thought! No, it would... <laughs> 
It's it's just so well. They seem to be bullet resistant, uh, quite resistant to bullets, and they they can only hear. So it's just it's so obvious what you. Any footage do. of them will show. Every time they go to listen to stuff, they open up their faces and this flesh. It's like so. Surely that's the weaker part of their body then. And it's like yeah. yeah surely, because it doesn't look like the armor on the outside. That looks like the soft fleshy bits on the inside. Yeah. Maybe human, humans and just so many of these fictional pieces of media, they're just too stupid to live. I and think there's a much more interesting know, story to be built people. there of the humans like dominating these aliens and to the point where you have to have questions about like, we can exterminate them, should we? Or, you know, you take them all captured and... District 9 is a better movie than most of them yeah. I'm mentioning. Don't look into any wikis about the Quiet Place aliens, just pure unstable -tism. Oh. Why? <laughs> Do they invent a bunch of shit to try to count for how stupid- What, well, that isn't even in the film? I wouldn't be surprised. If the humans didn't make such stupid decisions that let the aliens take over, Kang would have melted them. Yeah. True. That is true. Uh, Errant Signal's Children of Doom series is great. That's a YouTuber. Um, I'd be curious Children what, of Doom? Yeah, Children of Doom. I don't know what that would be regarding exactly, but... Uh, let me see here. Children of Doom. Is it about Doom? Oh, it looks like uh, it's about Doom. Yeah, hmm. the video game. Oh, I guess it's the things that uh, the Doom expi uh, inspired. So we have. Oh. Is of course Doom the, the, the marathon. Mm -hmm. we have I Quake. thought marathon was a Halo inspiration. It but could, maybe I, mean, I could be wrong about be. that. I mean, because marathon was inspired by Doom, and marathon I think did inspire Halo. So both of those can. Oh right. Right. Be okay. True. Uh, it has Descent on here. I remember that game from 1995. It has Goldeneye. Huh, Jeez. I can see how some of these could definitely be inspired by Doom. How do we do that? Um... Would it be world breaking if the Fire Nation wiped out 99.99% of the airbenders and were mostly successful for 100 years and still lost? Yes or yes? Um, I've, I've almost forgotten the, the world building of Atler at this point, but um, there's a lot of stuff with how everything went. There's a lot, a lot of questions. Funnily enough, ER was one of the people who brought up a lot of the, um, the problems with the sort of foundational world building for Atler me. I was like, oh, I didn't even think of it. Uh, you should know what the term is called, Rags. Glam. Giant leprechauns and monkeys. That's quite Giant an out-of-context super chat to have, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea why they sent you that message, but yeah. Alright. Have you guys seen Suicide Squad yet? Just saw it and thought it was really mediocre. Comedy fell really flat for me and overall just very meh. Um, well, uh, I really loved it. I think the comedy was excellent in the Suicide Squad, and I, I look really, forward really to enjoyed the characters. Our EFAP movies on it, because I think we, especially Weasel, we were losing our shit. Loved. <laughs> Blessed Weasel. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because we probably won't get a Suic The Suicide Squad 2, right? I doubt we'll get that. Uh, I don't know. Seems like Peacemaker was more successful for what it was than the Suicide Squad was for what yeah. it was. Seemingly. It's so weird that that movie, The Suicide Squad, only exists as it does because uh, James Gunn was temporarily cancelled by Disney. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So strange. Which, by the way, is part of what people think is the cause of... Um, obviously, there's a lot of causes, but one of the causes for why everything is so nonsensical in... Phase 4, because James Gunn was supposed to be a bigger part of it, and then he was booed, and now he's been brought back in as a smaller part. Yeah, I understand he, um, he was going to be in charge of the cosmic side. Not, uh, presumably anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's probably had significant ripple effects, you know? 
Probably. The one I'm not even aware of yet. Hmm. Death Note manages to make eating a bag of chips the most dramatic and exciting thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm gonna take a potato chip and eat it. <laughs> With all these dramatic zooms. Yeah, I haven't seen Death Note, but I've seen that. I swear I've seen this whole EFAP before, but I have no idea how that's possible. You're doing this live. What's going on? I don't know, man. Can't help you there. I don't know. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But Windows Update is more insightful than Filmento. But yeah, Windows Update's not going to give you writing advice. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Or tell you that Underwater isn't the bad alien ripoff for not copying it enough and copying it badly. I still a, remember. I, I enjoyed Underwater quite a bit, and I remember that video we did, too. Yeah, I, uh... What did we give Underwater? It was like uh, five or six. It was uh, like a five or like six. A six. I yeah. think it was a six. I think it was on the positive side. One of those ones that, there was some, yeah. like, it doesn't resonate with people stuck in. Um, as much as you'd, you'd hope, but there was a lot of things in it that was to be the, that were to be found. I even enjoyed the overall idea in it. The me the theme, <gasps> if you will, that... You know, the whole, like, we are fucking minuscule in this universe, but no matter how small you are, you can still make significant change. I like that. I do, too. It's a very good message to, to tell people. Oh my god, he actually defended with it. Hi, Rags. Hello. No idea what they're referring to. Um, I don't either. I wish I did. Gearless Nuggets. Do you want me to die? Well, no. Eat the nuggets no, if you have to, but that. also provide yeah. commentary. There you go. Eat the nuggets. Based Filmento comparing commies to bug monsters. Okay. I think he would have revised the script if he had uh, redrafted. Yeah. I think. Uh, want to give you some shackles and say Hassan Piker is a garbage human being. He ain't great. He ain't great. We of the Vietnamese species deny any allegations of inhumanity. Well, you have to take Filmento to court. <laughs> he said... The, uh... <laughs> to be fair, commies are genocidal monsters. Hi. Go home, GI, go home. GI, yeah, go home. Oh. They sent boy to fight man war. Jay Mabrew, Hassan Piker's a pause knee? I'm not sure what they're trying to say. Uh, Vietnamese versus Predator. <laughs> yes. Uh, my favorite EFAP game was Vietnamese Colonial Marines. Vietnamese colonial marines. Please keep in mind anyone listening to this out of context is brought on by <laughs> fucking Filmento. This is all in response. Okay. Yes, this is all in response to Filmento and what he said. We are simply reacting to him. We do not endorse anything that Filmento implies at all. With respect, Lord Longbong of Mutanton Abbey, you're missing the point. In order to find positives in Tomorrow War, he has to bullshit and to the point of saying the film did things it refused to. Um, I think there was an, an element of parody in the video, but uh, when he tries to give it a fair shake, he then starts like trying to compliment things that the film definitely didn't do well. And then, then he says like he tries to draw a theme, and then he says the thing. I knew it was, it's just not a great move. Who knew Platoon, Apocalypse Now, and Full Metal Jacket was sci-fi films? Who knew? Uh, so, Filmento has Movie Blob's sentence structure? Um, oh man, you remember, Yeah, we haven't done Movie Blob in so long that I kind of forgot. He, um... The way he talks is... You have to decipher. He doesn't. It. He doesn't use a lot of full stops. His oh. sentences are very long, um, to the point that it can be difficult to track what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, the Holocaust was supposed to work. 
Okay. Or conceptually, but all plans are supposed to work conceptually, right? I don't know. You don't need to single out the Holocaust for that. All plans are, like, are assumed to work. Yadelv, I'll kill you. I'll ban you like Hassan. I think some jokes like that were made. Um, Hassan is... Hassan Piker is the only person who could make the room temperature IQ joke work for Celsius. Oh. <laughs> 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 You guys heard that Doug Walker is having a redemption arc recently? Apparently Oni Plays made jokes of him and he took it like a champ even though he th and even thought it was really funny. Yeah, I, I remember when this happened. It was, um... It was, it's just the kind of thing that everyone would recommend. When someone who is, like, pretty well-liked and respected pokes fun of you and says, like, you did some cringe at some point and you have a very specific kind of character that's easy to do an impersonation of, it's best not to do the Linkara where you're like, this is frustrating. You shouldn't say this about me. Like that sort of stuff. Versus just being like, someone asks you in a stream and you go, yeah, that was really funny. And uh, yeah, I do, I, I can see how that would be an impression. Like if you handle it really chill, you get people being like, you know that Doug Walker guy, he's actually okay. And then they're like, you know that Link Car guy, he's fucking hilarious. For all the wrong reasons. Or I guess the right reasons, I don't even know. You guys know what Lightbringer, right? Lightbringer? Linkara's so. Linkara's OC. No. Uh, Linkara is a fucking are... hilarious person, and I'm <laughs> almost sad because I know like so much about him, and yet you guys probably know very little. He's he's just uh, as much a yeah. gold mine as Wings of Redemption. Oh my goodness! And the thing that in the same I'm, way? Not the same way. A completely different way. Um, oh, okay. I, okay. Okay. I gotcha. I never understood. Like, I never believed his voice at first. I thought it was something he put on, but it's just, he's just cursed. He has the, um, the hyper nerdy caricature voice. Where he talks like this all the time. And he can't in any way <laughs> come across as anything but the nerdy character in a cartoon. It's ridiculous, uh, but hilarious at the same time. He reviews comics and, um, he made his own comic. You know what? I should just skip to the stuff that's most well known about him is when um, his profiles were traced to different sites. They looked in his history, and when I say different sites, I am of course referring to adult ones. And people found out what his fetishes were. Um, one of the most famous ones is that he had a strong fetish for the green M&M. &M. Um, he was a powerful female character. You can, you guys can imagine. Yeah, pretty hot. Green M&M. &M. You're like, alright, I can see that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I love her curves. Um, but, but the one that, whenever I see a reference, is so hard not to fucking explode in laughter. Um, dead Muppets. Dead Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> what the? That is bizarre. That is very strange. <laughs> it's just like... I remember when the, the video very, went over it, it was just like specific. Kermit with the two crosses on his eyes. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> Little X's for eyes. Yeah. Dead. I've never seen a Muppet die. There's a couple of videos that go over his, um, his antics online. He's a, he's a funny character, Linkara. And one day we will review the Channel Awesome films in the form of EFAP, I'm sure of it. It'll be really... Really entertaining. Lindsay Ellis was in those. You know, before she... Well, she's not even on the internet anymore, so... I think. Before, before, she, before uh, she definitely uh, didn't get cancelled? She said that she left. Yeah, I don't know if she's gonna make, like, a grand return at some point, maybe. I don't know. Um... Oh yeah, see, the follow-up is, while in contrast, Linkara became a big baby over Oni's jokes. Now, this doesn't mean that his reviews are good, but I do respect him for doing that. Oh, referring to Doug. Yeah, no, he's, um, you know... What what we always conclude when we watch him is that he puts effort in. He works really hard yeah. um, to get that vibe. Whether or not it yields, you know, good content, I guess, is, but, like, it seems to work pretty hard. You, you can't and help has it. done so, what, like a decade at this point, right, he's been doing this. Yeah, he's one of, the, like, the earliest, sort of, people who made film reviewing into a career. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, on the internet, I mean, not IRL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know dogs outrank their handlers in military? Do they? I had no clue. I had no clue. 
I don't, know, I don't, know, if, I don't do. know if that's funny. Uh, oh, I don't see them giving the order, so yeah. who knows? This is a five pound super chat that will put five pounds in your account because of this super chat, which is five pounds. So you can buy something for five pounds because of the super chat. All right. Thank you very much. It rips off dream collapsing, same way one winged angel rips off Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. Uh, that mean anything to you guys? The same, the same way what rips off Stravinsky? Uh, the same way one winged angel rips off. One winged angel? I'm not familiar with that. It, it sounds like an anime thing. Could be. But I'm 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 quite familiar with Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, um, so. Well, yeah, if you're only familiar with the one half, that's kind of useless. Yeah, I'm thank not goodness familiar I'm with familiar with half. a good one. Hmm. Speaking of Vietnam, did you guys know that the Viet Cong tunnel system uh, was so intricate as to include underground storage rooms, kitchens, infirmaries, bedrooms, and a litany of Indiana Jones-esque booby traps? Yeah, there's uh, I, I think there's it. some videos from like documentaries on YouTube that just show how um extensive these uh these underground tunnels were, and yeah, that they did have like even facilities, but of course there were big stretches that were incredibly narrow and small, and yeah, you did there were booby traps like um that there'd be like if you hit a trip wire and release like a viper or something or um the I, I think they called the Punji or Punja like sticks, the ones where you step on it, the big bamboo thing comes out with the sharpened sticks. Mm. This was, yeah, it was, um, Not they were called fuel. tunnel rat. Well, someone had to go in there because that was what tunnel rats were. They were, um, like American Australian soldiers who I think, uh, the tallest they could be was like five foot six, get lowered face first, like head first, lowered by their feet into the tunnels with like one pistol and a flashlight. Yeah, here's um, your here's your flashlight. Here's your 1911. Uh, yeah, I think it was a 1911. Yeah, and, and that was their job. Um, yeah, it is. It is. It like goddamn that was like that would have been a scary a scary uh, role to have. Yeah, that's another example of like. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a lot of this crossover with Russia in terms of when you're fighting an enemy that knows their land really well and uses it to their advantage when you're a invading force. And you're like, wait, what? Well, the yeah. Fuck? Um, well, yeah, because that was that was like the big thing with the the Viet Cong was just they were experts at guerrilla warfare. They knew the terrain. They knew how to leverage the terrain. Um, they didn't have superior weaponry and like firepower or anything like that, but the they definitely had more of a familiarity with the terrain. Uh, I fucking launched my chain chomp and it does it in such a way that it hits me. It's like that feels like it shouldn't even be possible. <laughs> It pro that, that feels, feels like something that they were gonna fix in the game, but they just ran out of time. <laughs> um, it's bizarre. Are the Vietnamese supposed to be Alfred? Maybe. What if the aliens are time police trying to prevent? That's all it says is well, trying to like, prevent. They're like the, the, the time cops from Rick and Morty with the white spikes. <laughs> You messed up Tom all the hell. <laughs> yeah. You killed my gun. You killed <laughs> my gun. gun. <laughs> Just that as a sentence. <laughs> oh, Rick and Morty. Remember? Remember those days? I remember back in like season two days. Yeah, geez. Uh, EFAP movies Galaxy Quest when? I'd be on board with that. I like that movie a lot. That'd probably be funny. Would you rather lose your perception of time or your ability to speak? Ability to speak. Perception I think of that time. If you actually, it would become a nightmare it. world if I lost my perception. Yeah, of time. I, th I think so. I think. I think so. you would just need it. You need to be able to perceive time. It's so baked into like your own existence. I don't. I just don't think you could live without it. You'd need it. Yeah, because because if I don't have the ability to perceive time, is it as simple as I get like a bottle of water out of the fridge to pour into a cup and I like forget that I have it and I don't know how to pour it because I don't know if water goes forward or backward. You know, like, I, th I thought maybe I don't know how it was just talk. everything is experienced non-linearly. Like you keep moving between scenes in your life oh. almost. And I was oh, just so like... it could be blind matter then. 
Yeah. If, if it was like, like I said, I would take my ability to speak. It's it's, it's, it's easy. I to think me. I would too, because I'll write stuff. I just won't talk anymore. I can, yeah, yeah I could still like live a life. I could play games, Where watch movies. I experience movies. time non-linearly, like that fucks up everything. <laughs> I could just... still make YouTube videos. I just pay someone to narrate. I was actually about to say, like, like I, I would be, I would host EFAP on my end, but I just wouldn't speak. And it would be about getting every guest in and getting everyone in. And then I would still write scripts, but I would have to hire somebody manager. to speak them. Yeah. yeah, I really would yeah, become like, a manager of it, it all. Yeah. And then have like a way for me to put messages on screen <laughs> to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, the, the, the ability per to perceive the passage of time is just, you, you need it to just basically exist. I don't know if you could survive without it, honestly. You'd be completely dependent on other people to keep you alive. Yeah, it just sounds like a horrible existence. It depends on the, yeah, it depends on the severity of it. Mm -hmm. If they're talking about just the lack of it entirely, you would not be able to function on your own. But if we're talking about things like short-term memory loss, or that that might be a different story. It depends on how far you go with it. Uh, Gadalb core source. The corn sauce's flavor is theme. Yeah, I got, I got no corn clue sauce? what's happening here. Corn sauce is corn flavored, right? Presumably. And you can do a lot with corn. Mm. Don't get me wrong, you can do a lot with corn. Wagsies is sponsored of... by Ridge Wallet. Oh yeah. What were we gonna say sorry. Ridge Wallet. Uh, that. They're that the ones who do that, like, wallet that's in the big oh. metal thing with all the cards and then the money thing on the other side. Yeah. Um, no thanks. I don't like those I just... wallets. I don't really see what the utility is there of, like, that kind of wallet. Well, we had yeah, plenty of people saying, like, they I liked legit... them, but I don't like them, no. I'm I like the leather plus, wallet to like... fold they must out be, with the... You know, there must be a market <laughs> for them. Well, yeah, that's, like, that's a lot ones... of money to spend on a wallet. It looks like the cheapest ones here are 95 bucks, so... Man, that's a lot of money to spend on a wallet. Because yeah. you can get a nice leather wallet for that kind of money. You can get money, a genuine get leather that. wallet for that kind of money. And yeah. I need something that's less rigid. Because this looks like it's always going to be the same size. And it, it's not like an actual wallet in the sense of, oh, I need to put one more thing in than its capacity. That's fine. It'll just get a little bit bigger. You know, it'll just stretch a little bit. Possible. Yeah. But I can't let me pull out. I guess it's also a matter of I don't know that I want a wallet that has like a mechanism that I need to use to open up the cards. Feels like just adding a mechanism to something like a wallet, eventually it's gonna fail, you know? Or like it become be unreliable. Yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, want it to be Wow, well, I mean we, we went through this sit, before. We, we, me and Frenny put our front pockets. We don't put it in the back yeah, pocket. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. put them in my ass pocket because why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> a year ago, we I had this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I remember we had this conversation, but like, I don't understand why you put your wallet in your ass pocket. Like, I have you, to you agree. You sit yeah. on it. Seems so inefficient. Rax, do you have anything to say for yourself? No, we, we've already had this conversation. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Mutually, please, in your best Obi-Wan voice, say, A more elegant currency from a simpler time. I don't even... Are we talking about Super Chats? Or are we talking about something... The Ridge Wallet, maybe? I don't know. Hopefully not <laughs> cryptocurrency. Well, we were talking about... Um, we, <laughs> might, we might have been talking about... Um, uh, were we talking about, like, coins that fucking laundromat shit? The, oh, remember coins, coins in general? In yeah, because it's all in a wallet. Yeah, depending on where you are in the country, coin usage varies, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah, we just I still don't know what back. that fact is into putting it in your pocket rather than in a wallet. To, but the other day, I had to get a roll of quarters because oh. I only use them to operate um, uh, like laundry machines. Uh huh. Uh, I have, it, so I needed to go and fetch coins. Because they, they just never get used here. It's it's very rare. Maybe if you pay in cash, you'll get some here and there. But especially nowadays with so many people paying in cards and stuff, it's just never... I just never have coins on me. I never get them. Yeah, they're much more common here. 
Um, Americans don't I'm have coin going... pouches in their wallets. It's annoying. I'd love to have them. I never put anything in my back pocket. That's dumb. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't put anything in my back pockets, and I have I mean, them. Uh, my, it's usually left and right would be phone and wallet. Um, I remember I saw an ad for the PSP back in the day where the dude had it in his back pocket. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep a PSP in my back pocket. Well, it was poking out of his pocket because it's that large, yeah. and it's like, dude, in your back pocket, where someone can just joink it where you need to sit down on it? Where, yeah, like, that what? seems... I feel like I'd never put a PlayStation. I would in never my put them up pocket pocket anyway. Front it's or too bag. big. Yeah, it's a it's you a PSP. Put it in a bag. I spent hundreds of dollars on that, or however much they cost. I, I'm not gonna put it in my pocket. I'm gonna have a well, case I mean, for it. I mean, your phone is more expensive than a PlayStation Portable, and I was gonna say put those now. your credit cards are in your wallet, which pocket. is a capacity of presumably this 300 pound in Britain is the cap to pull out on a normal. Or like, you know, transactions that, what I'm saying is the, the wallet's not far well, away from being worth that much. Is the yeah, I think it's way more difficult to take a wallet out of someone's pocket without them knowing, because you'd have to like reach down and grab it out and then pull it out, which would be really difficult to do. Well, yeah, so that's why like bringing up how much it's worth, it's more so it's the, the form. The form yeah. Yeah. That's it, yeah. And I think, well, part of it is also its ability to get damaged as well when it comes to value. So, like, yeah, when you like a, wallet, a PSP is super susceptible to being fucked up. Well, if I'm not using <laughs> it, I want it in the little the and... case you get with them. The, yeah, the that's active. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I if it's like my DS or something. If I'm taking it with me somewhere, I want to have a case to put it in. It's like why we have cases on our phones because it's protecting our mm -hmm. investment, so to speak. With yeah. a PSP or a DS, I just never a pocket just seems. Yeah, I don't want it to get damaged or scratched. Like if a, uh, like especially with you guys, right? You, you have more coins than we do and use them. Imagine having a coin scraping against the screen. Of, ooh, ugh. you don't want to keep the PSP in your pocket. At the very least, you'd want a screen protector. Or and some maybe like a if little. Any pocket has got to be the front, right, not the back. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's too yeah. It it doesn't have any give because you can squish a wallet. But you can't, you probably shouldn't squish or bend a PSP. That's probably not very good. Or I need a, I need a guy to go get that beverage out of the freezer. I'll be right back. Great. I don't know why you wouldn't have said drink. Say beverage. Or well, every time. It's a three syllable word. Beverage. beverage. Yeah, like it. So unnecessary. It's like a Vosh thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know that I often... And I guess it is because I always... Whenever I hear beverage, I do tend to think of alcohol more so than just, like, a drink, even though it does describe a drink of any kind. First thought I always have is, why are you saying that? <laughs> why just say drink? I think beverage is what you would hear if somebody was trying to speak in a more official capacity about yeah. a drink, you know? Yeah. Like, you would you would read that on a financial report, like, beverage. Like, Coca-Cola talking about their beverages, but mm. I don't, yeah, I don't know why. Um... <laughs> Imagine you rob Rags and his coins fall out of him like Sonic. <laughs> 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 and then you hear the noise as well. <laughs> like <she's on> <laughs> right, he's like struggling to pick him up. Like, God damn it! Well, yeah, and it's like, man, if only I had a wallet that could contain all of these coins. Oh, I, yeah. Just, you, you can stuff your coins into your pocket. You can do you that, can, but, but <laughs> don't know why, you would. why would you do that? I don't know. Oh man, I just hit three. Just random mushrooms were on the on the track in a row, all separated perfectly in distance to the most advantage. Oh, beautiful. You love to see that. Um, My progress on YouTube has been slow and gradual, but when I see a video like this, I remember that I'm good enough to get big on the internet. Well, like, so I don't want to send any shade too much to, to Filmento, but his format for success is not his scripts. It's uh, topics. It's the thumbnails and topics. Yeah. And, well, and also the promise that you're going to learn why the thing failed or succeeded from him. That's, that's what his promise is. It's very potent in terms of getting people to click. That alone should probably be enough for you. Um, this is going to sound really cynical, but if you make up bullshit as to why the film is working or not working, that sounds like it might make sense. You should be able to get the sim yeah. similar success once you do it for enough years. 
Um, I, I think both myself, Ringy, and Rags would all prefer, though, that you actually, you know, work on getting really good scripts. Yes, scripts. Those Add to your, hard. um, you know, you, like, like, create a really meaningful analysis of a thing instead of just being like, well, this one's out, what can we say? Some of the ones he comes up with are strange as fuck, like, th wasn't it like how the Suicide Squad, it, sometimes he'll pick, like, how this movie failed to be this topic. movie, and it's like, It's wait, like the one, yeah, like this one specific, it's, it's weird, the parameters for success and failure. And I yeah. guess it's also just like, it's a little presumptuous in a sense to assume why it would fail or succeed. I don't know that you can really say like, why a film fails or succeeds at the box office that you could give like a really concrete yeah. reason as to why. I would say that it can't um, always be just what was in the scripts. You never know what's going on. Well, no, wow, there's just too, too many examples of films that were great that fail. And it's like, well, what, what was wrong with it? It wasn't the movie, right? Or it hits I at guess the wrong time, them, wrong market. You may be able to argue the a lack of appeal, but still strong quality for the uh, thing that it was. But uh, I guess I'm I guess saying like to say that's the anatomy of a failure, though. Like oh. a, f a failure to have an appeal that you know. Oh yeah, but, but I'm world. saying like you could do that, but even that wouldn't necessarily cover exactly what happened if you don't know the all the meta information of how this thing came out. Who made you know like for oh. example after it, it's like yeah. why did that fail? It's like well. It's probably first and foremost that it's terrible. Um, um, I guess the problem is it's like, yeah, but there are plenty of terrible films that succeed, so it's got to be something else, right? On no, no, I, I, this is what I'm saying. So, point, that's going to be bad for it, but it's like, does that explain it in full? It's like, probably not. Is the fact that it, it no. was made by M. Night part of it? And it's like, and they avoided letting people know that? It's like, yeah, maybe that put people off maybe. once they found out. What else could it be? It's like, um, I guess I'd have to look into what people were saying when it was coming out, maybe what it was coming out alongside, what, mm -hmm. like, you need a critics lot of were saying. Information. Yeah, like, it's... Because yeah. you have to be... Like, why is it that Dark Strangers had a bigger, uh, sort of, uh, reduction in viewings and return viewings from viewers than No Way Home did? Like, we can say that it's because the film is worse, but, like, maybe it's more complicated than that. I don't know. Because, mm -hmm. uh... We'd like to believe, I think, that the films are getting, you know, results Rewarded. proportionate to their yeah. quality, and that No Way Home is something that I think would spread quite well with word of mouth, while Doctor Strange is a fucking weird movie. Um, so it yes. lines up to me to a degree, like, the, it's got lower returns over time than No Way Home does, but at the same time, you know, a wizard could be like, that's not it at all, and I'd be like, oh, okay. The wizard who knows all and sees all, yeah. Yeah. If only he were more available, but he's not. Uh, he doesn't we have to return my here in the realm of uncertainty. I like the idea that his answering machine. Hi, uh, wizard. It's it's Mola. Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to know, like, the, could you could you help me out in explaining like who was responsible for that? The, the, why the Illuminati were included in the movie <laughs> and made these decisions? Like, whose whose fault was that? Thanks. It's smaller. Could you imagine um, if we had it, access to the writer's room discussions for all of Multiverse of Madness? Yeah, if we were a fly on Jesus the wall, Christ. you know? If, oh, for if every it was one like of those decisions. On flies on the wall, and I just get to list all these decisions. It's like, why the f- <laughs> Yeah, I the, the them, flies are very- I can't understand Just me. asking basic questions. Just basic questions. I like that about as an about idea. About incursions. On the wall. Yeah. About, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm. You know, like, I, I need to see when they came up with the memory store. I want to see that discussion. Yeah. Uh, I want to yeah. look at everyone's faces, see if anyone there has any awareness. <laughs> but they're all just smiling, and it's like a yeah, very... Like, you know just... People will love this. It's the future. <laughs> and then someone's like, it's not the future, it's an alternate universe. It's like, same thing. Same thing. Oh, okay. Alright, alright. Ugh. Uh, well, go and push the fire. wallet button. Wallet button? What's this? What's that? Uh, oh yeah, because remember, it's got a it's got a button on the wallet that opens it up. Oh right, okay. You know what? That's what wallets need. Mm -hmm. Breaking moving parts. Uh, we have. I love seen... how analog my simple little wallet is. It's just leather and it folds, and I put it in my pocket, and I just have a great day. Wow, what are you from? The fucking have... ancient world. Jeez. Apparently, the wisdom of the ancients. Hmm. Maybe some things that. Are... 
I don't need more in my life to worry about. The thing that I keep my money and my cards and stuff in, really don't need that to be on the list. Really don't. We have single dollars and 25 cent max coin, so they're not used hardly as much. So just having them in your pocket happens when you get change back. Yeah, it was more I of a... Um... doesn't address anything about the form factor, though, of if you have a wallet with the, butt, the, the zip to just put the coins in. Yeah, like, it just seems inefficient no matter what. Because it's two places that your money is stored instead of one. In America, public transportation is reserved for the lower class most of the time. Therefore, coins are basically superfluous in business transactions. Um, I wouldn't agree with that premise. Uh, I think it, it definitely depends on where you live. It, it depends on where you live, not necessarily how rich you are. Because if you live in a town like... Um, like maybe like Washington DC or something like that. That's just sort of how you get around because of the layouts of these, especially older cities. But everyone has a car. Like where I live, everyone's got a car, regardless of your class or your, your monetary situation. Cars are not expensive to own or maintain. You can have a car as, as clunky or as nice as you want. It's just feel like it's a matter of space and where you live. Like, wait, do, what if you pay for like I don't know you you groceries with with cash like well, Keanu Reeves uses public travel like I don't think oh what that poor people use public transport that's like <laughs> I don't know what that's about yeah that was my whole first yeah. thing there was yeah, like, I don't like, agree I don't, with this first premise I don't agree with that at all as sentiment there are heaps of people who catch public transport it depends on what city you live in and how Just... good the public transport is yeah just because like you could there's plenty of places where it would take more money or whatever to maybe have a car but that wouldn't even necessarily make it more efficient or better you would just have well, this no. expensive if, if you live in a city like you can't use with better public transport people are just going to get the public transport. yeah like there are places like, where it would be take... inefficient to have the car well like how many people drive into work in manhattan versus get the subway and like, I don't know how many poor people are getting the bus into like the train into Manhattan to like go to work on Wall Street, you know? Like people yeah, get. If I you're don't super know, rich, yeah. it's not going to speed your day up or anything, unless you just want that huge. Well, unless you've got like a prestige. super duper reserve, unless you've got a super duper reserved park, I'm pretty sure lots of people are going to be getting the subway into New York to go to work. Because yeah, I, I can understand, like, when you get to a certain level of richness and they're, like, using fucking private jets just to move a mile, it's like, okay, I guess you're yeah, that rich, but... Yeah, yeah. But, like, the average person who still is wealthy but goes to work is probably catching the subway. Probably. Same in London, same in, like, uh, other cities that have good public transport that I can't think of. Well, I don't know, people disagree on that, don't they? Whether London has a good... But I'm sure it's more efficient than, like, the public transport in, like, some American city, you know, like, um... Because like we I just imagine... have buses here, and they're not, right. like, super popular, but they're <laughs> there is an option that you could take. <laughs> and when I worked downtown, I drove to work, uh, but so plenty of people took the bus. What, what we're trying to get at here is you don't need to make really weird arguments to explain <laughs> why you incorrectly store your, uh, <laughs> coins. Yeah, no, I'm willing to believe the coins are a less common thing for you guys, but that doesn't sure. change anything, really. Doesn't influence anything at all, really, as a point of the argument now. Um... The coin purse discussion is why I tune into EFAB. It deserves the Skittles discussion treatment as a cartoon. I'm on board with that. If someone mm -hmm. wants to animate that shit, you go right ahead. Yeah, sure. Well, it's um, been a year and nobody's... nobody's Maybe they're still Take working on it. Oh, there's a meme fap. We got a meme fap. Who knows what? Uh, oh, true, what, true. What yeah, treasures will be within. Yes, yeah, uh, treasures. The only time I carry coins is when I get them as change from a vending machine. Also, places have change machines to get coins if you need them. Yeah, that doesn't change okay. anything. <laughs> doesn't change anything at all about uh, where you would store it. Me and Fringy's countries both have those as well. Yep. Dollar coins are rare in America doesn't even doesn't <laughs> matter you're just using all of these arguments I, that sounds, are completely it, irrelevant what, what are they arguing for i think they're arguing that for some reason it makes sense to store coins in your pocket because you guys don't have like one dollar coins well it's oh, just because i, I remember interesting 
coin facts. No, no I remember the conversation it. because there were no. heaps of people who were on your side for some reason. They they're can't American, that's why. Like, for many, for many amazing reasons, but that's all right. It's just because their con your country does it this way for some reason. Where like, yeah, people don't culturally, have that's coins just in their wallet. how it's gotten to and be. And so you just think that that's like the correct way to do it. Mm, don't. But uh, good old Britain and possibly Australia, can't say. Uh, we have all these systems set up to properly account for our loose change. Yeah, like a little just like pouch in your in your wallet that you just put in your fact, coins in. That's already up. indicative of the, the situation. The fact that I referred to it as to account for your loose change. Like what you exactly. use as your like system is what we refer to as loose change. Loose change, exactly. Uh, to imply that there is such a thing as not loose change, yeah. <laughs> i.e. a more efficient method of storing change. Uh, fuck, Mary kill, Hassan, Hassan's chat, and Hassan's chair. Well, the chair's the smartest one out of the lot, I think. Yeah, I'd want to marry the chair so we can hang, just hang out more. Uh, the other one is Hassan's chat. Oh. Kill him, fuck Hassan. <laughs> They're right. too, they're too gone. They're too far gone. Uh, Rags is right. If he ever needed them, he'd put them in his pocket. When he gets home, he'd leave them in his piggy bank. In America, coins are meaningless. Also, they are laundry machines that take cards. You're wrong. How does that I help your argument? You. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Why would it be preferable to have your money stored in different places rather than one place? Why is that? Yeah, Just so admit that maybe you guys helps. do it wrong. It, it, maybe like, this can help. If me and Fringy had enough coins that it completely bulges and bursts the wallet, it's like, well, no, so you only carry I'll put enough. Them in a piggy bank, yeah, yeah you, you, you place your excess in something like a piggy bank, or you exchange yeah. them for notes or whatever, but you keep a certain amount of. And all, you, all I've learned from all of these fun facts about coins is that you guys need to keep on you a little bit of change so that you can Some use change, these machines. Yeah. Laundry, yeah. Whereas, like, Frankly, most of the time you don't need to use cash money anymore. Yeah, like most everything's done with cards, uh, which is yeah. Fine, even like but, getting yeah. the bus, you just have a card that you swipe to get on, and then you load it up with credit. But nevertheless, there may well be a place where you need to use coins, and instead of me having to fish through like some piggy bank and then putting those coins in my pocket and hopefully not forgetting about them when I put them in the wash, I can put them in my wallet, which I'm never gonna forget because it's a wallet. And it's there with all of my other money things, like money and cards. It's like better in every way imaginable. I can't it's think of any benefit better. from leaving it loose. I don't... There is no benefit, as far as I'm concerned. Except that you might lose that money. Just leave it in the pocket, that it might get jammed in the washing... I remember someone said it's impossible for money to get jammed in the washing machine. Just like... And I remember I looked it up, and I was like, oh, yeah, just something on the internet says, I don't even need to look it up. There's obviously, you can jam well, I mean, shit you're washing. All you need to, like, the, your, your, uh, I only need one example. So, yeah, you only need to know that it's possible. Which, it's happened before. I know it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't be so bold as to claim that's not possible. <laughs> like, I'm pretty yeah, sure. It's not possible because in America, we put them in our pocket for some reason. Well, they always make sure to put it in the biggie bank when they get home. Yes, I'm, I, I, yeah, I it have to. It just no seems doubt so incredibly inefficient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rags is 100% correct. We don't carry a purse. No, a coin purse is what you call a wallet. Ours is a billfold. Coins won't fit. Well, that's your fault. That's <laughs> your fault for designing shit wallets. Just make a wallet with well, a zip that you can put your coins in. If it's your choice to have a billfold with no additional pocket for, a, for, for coins. Fault. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess you have to have your coins yeah, floating around your pocket wallet. at that point. Buy a better wallet that has a little place to put your coins in. Um, but is that true then? In America you call purses wallets and you call billfolds I, wallets? Like, I, I don't know. I, we just call them wallets. Not a, to, purse is yeah, like, not to, a billfold and a wallet are generally used interchangeably. A purse is like something that a woman carries around. Yeah. But like, yeah, well, usually that's the way it works here, is there's a sort of gendered language to a purse. Like, a man mm -hmm. doesn't really carry a purse, they carry a wallet. Yeah, and here they're just different things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, at first I thought Rags was right, but now I think Fringy is right. Well, good. I mean, it shouldn't have taken that much <laughs> to convince you, but sure, I'm glad you're on the correct side we just, of this like, like I said, the, the biggest selection of our audience is American, so we gotta... We gotta gradually help them I, understand I that their, their culture isn't correct in everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. They, they made a lot of cool things happen. A lot of cringe stuff, sure. too. It was a mistake, this wallet <laughs> problem that you guys have with coins. Uh, it's just cultural difference. I don't know why any guy carries quarters or pennies in a wallet. Girls do in their purse, but obviously a different thing. What does that even is mean? This like, what, is this, like, really upsetting that it's like, <laughs> hey, girls do that. Girls efficiently store their money. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it, when it comes laundry day, I guess you want to be a girl, huh? Yeah, where they actually have all of their coins and everything that they could need with them in one place rather than fishing around in their pockets looking for coins. <laughs> Like I said, just keep keep a standard amount of coins on you at all times, so that when that one day happens, you're like, man, I'm really thirsty, and you walk past a vending machine, you're like, oh, it doesn't take cards, or notes, or whatever. You're like, fuck. Fortunately, I have coins in my wallet. Yeah. I didn't need to keep thinking every time I leave the house, shit, better get some fucking coins and put them in my pocket, <laughs> just in case. It's always there. You don't have to keep account, you don't have to keep track of it. It's always there, available to you. Uh... Here in the States, what we refer to as a wallet is typically a billfold. US notes as low as $1 tends to limit the amount of change one carries. Again, Except that's so fine. you got quarters and pennies and um, nickels. So, and, and you have products that you buy that are like twenty nine ninety five. You still have change. Yeah. You just don't have as much change. And like highlighting to myself and Fringy that like we often don't require change. I'd be like, so as long as you require change... In any way, you need to account. Yeah, like yeah. I'm you willing to concede. You have a wallet that has a little zip that you can put coins in yeah. if ever you need to, which you might, even if it's less frequently than we need to. But I'm starting to think it's okay. still more frequent than people would have us believe. I think so. I absolutely think so. Twenty nine ninety five is a meme that originates from the United States. That's a meme that comes from your country. I'm <laughs> like, oh yeah, this is you know that these. The, the, I'm I can feel sure the finger just, pointing yeah. with that one. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just it's just funny. Like, oh, yeah, we don't use coins, except for the fact that, like, isn't, like, the majority of goods priced in the United States on that 95 shit? Because it's just a, it's just a thing that a lot of countries do because it's better at convincing people that it's cheaper. I just don't yeah. believe that there's, like, so little applicabil uh, like, <laughs> applicability <laughs> for coins. I just don't believe you. And even if there just was only a little it amount, it's still keep Because I've got coins in my wallet, and I don't know the last time I used them. I can't tell you. Me but, either. You know. but at least they're there, yeah. conveniently placed for me, instead of in my pockets. Uh, but Tomorrow War, you had a problem with them sending normal people instead of military, but didn't the military go first and die? Agree, training is bad, though. Um, I don't think the military went first and died. I thought that the process was conscript uh, conscription from the get-go. If I remember correctly. I was going to say, I can't remember enough about the mechanics. Remember, oh, no, no, no. Remember, the paradox was people, if if you die, you can go to the future. Right. If you die before that timeline. So they couldn't send, so they, they couldn't still, just send military. They'd, like, they throw you the fuck in, right? Like, it's not. They just throw you in. Yeah. It's it doesn't stupid matter as fuck, especially for civilians. Like, it's mm -hmm. stupid anyway, but yeah. 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 You're just throwing lives away for nothing. Yeah. Everything's horribly done in that. I feel like that means we're at the end of people trying to defend the coin thing. <laughs> no promises on that. Yeah. Uh, I think we can all agree that America is strange. A little bit. Have you seen the mm -hmm. meme where a, a British person posts their like lunch or whatever and it's it's like something kind of strange and then someone quote tweets it saying, why do British people eat as though they're still like in wartime? And then... <laughs> uh, a British person, I guess, responds to that, saying, why do Americans eat as though they have free healthcare? No! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, oh. oh, boy. The fucking country wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... What other wars are there? Well, civil wars, but... <laughs> 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 Mola, what's your favorite melee theme and stage? Ooh. That's a tough one. So, my favorite stage by playtime is probably going to be Final Destination, but only because of the fact that it's like a it's like a really great testing ground. Uh, mm -hmm. All things are the same sort of thing, but I what always loved... Um, I always loved Hyrule Temple for how fucking huge it is, and uh, cool the most intense fights I would have on that would last really long because both of us would end up going to the like middle of the map, if you remember, which is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you it's can, hard to eject someone. Yeah. 
Um, but then, What's of course. Favorite team, then? Oh, well, I was just going to say that I have lots of favorite maps. It's kind of hard to pick what my favorite mm -hmm. map is, though. As for favorite theme, right. hmm. I remember liking the Poke Floats one. Um, Big Blue. Yeah. Big Blue's cool. Um, Yoshi Island. All the Yoshi related ones, I think. Yeah, uh, this is going to be awkward because I'm going to start saying all of them. <laughs> well, so, my favorite course, I, I really like the Quinaria one. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell you why. I think it's just because the backgrounds were cool. Uh, yeah, and it's it a slightly unconventional layout for that stage. Um, I really liked Hyrule as well. That was a cool one. Um, I uh, I really liked On It. Um, and I also like On It's theme a hell of a lot too. As for like a favorite though, I, I mean, is it fair to just pick like the menu theme for me for like it almost feels a bit unfair? It's pretty cool. Yeah, um, it, it, I, I like it a lot. Got a um, vibe. And I mean, I uh, I like um, I like uh, Brinstar had some cool music. Oh as well. yeah, yeah. And Brinstar was a cool course. The way that kind of split apart uh, in different areas, like I remember broke, him, split up and then descending into lava. I remember at that point. I was super into Metroid on GameCube, and so loving Melee, I was just like, all these Metroid references that I don't understand because they're not Prime references, they're Super Metroid Yeah, and stuff. Super Metroid. And then Brawl comes along, and, and I was like, oh, <laughs> now it's yeah. referencing my it era. Had the, uh, it had the boss fight in Metroid, the first boss in Metroid uh, 1, Metroid yeah, Prime yeah. 1 was age. I forget, it's like a parasite or something, Queen Parasite. Yeah, something like that. Um, that was a cool one. And that level split apart a bunch. Brawl had a lot of cool courses. Uh, cool courses, stages. Mm -hmm. This is a really was a cool game. franchise. Uh, oh yeah, I love it. I love Smash Brothers. PlayStation All Stars, you know, just didn't quite, quite make it. Uh, well, th they could have done. Didn't they have um some of the stages that would clash with other stages or, or whatever? Well. That was one of the what cool do you mean, things. Like, so like, would, um, oh, that you could switch between them in the middle of a match. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because I can't. I, can't, well, no, I don't I think, know if I'm making I think this up. Smash Brothers had that. I think Smash Brothers has that as a feature now. It could be that. Like, I, I really don't know where exactly I'm drawing this from. But basically, like, the idea in my head is that you could have, you know, Bowser's castle and shit everywhere, fire, blah blah blah. But then like something crashes in and it's like Metroids jumping around, people jumping around, and, and different. A Aliens from Metroid as a series uh, uh, floating around there as well, and it's just like it's like two stages clashing together or something. Oh, I see. But I can't remember well, if I'm big, making that up or if it was from something. The big problem with PlayStation's All Stars had is that the roster just kind of didn't make a lot of sense. Like one of the characters was Big Daddy. Bioshock didn't release originally on PlayStation. Um, yeah. And then yeah. they had like Dante, I remember, but it was Devil DMC Devil May Cry Dante, not like PlayStation Dante. I remember watching a video going over. They lost a lot of ones they wanted to have because well, because uh, Crash obviously was one well, that they would have wanted. Wasn't Tomb Raider one, and they were in the process of rebooting it, so they were like, "We don't know what we want to do with it." Like, well, yeah, that makes it awkward because it, it's it's the problem is that a lot of the ones that were PlayStation iconic were like not owned by PlayStation. Hmm. Or Sony, you know, whereas everything Nintendo was owned by Nintendo except for, like, Banjo-Kazooie. And so, it's like, yeah, it makes sense to have Crash and Spyro, but you can't because mm -hmm. Activision, you, ha you need them. And Tomb Raider's another one. It's like, well, you needed Square Enix. Uh, Dante, it's like, you need Capcom, and they wanted to promote the new one. You really should have had Solid Snake, but you, they wanted Raiden instead. Or Raiden. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, and then you just end up with a roster that kind of doesn't you have all the characters that kind of make sense to be there, like Kratos and Ratchet and um, Jack and everything. But, and then you have like Fat Princess of downloadable game. It's like, what? Hmm. <laughs> I feel like this is, uh... but I guess it's, the interesting thing is it feels like uh, PlayStation now as well would still have a better shot than, uh, than Microsoft. There's just not enough Microsoft characters. Who would you have? Master Chief, Marcus Phoenix. Um... Uh, uh hmm. who else would you have, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm not even like trying to be a meme. No, would I know you, like, it's uh, <laughs> it's just it's just so hard to... to go against something as it's like I an guess, institutional uh, game at this point. The Smash. Joanna, wow, it's hard to compete against Smash. Nintendo's just got like an unparalleled catalog, and they and, all um, really format too. Really like, well. it's nailed yeah. at this point. 
Yeah, pretty much. It's, to the point where it's hard any, not to any, copy it. No? Well, that's kind of the thing. Any game that tries to do what Smash does will be compared to Smash. A game that's had five entries, super duper refined, has a roster that you can never beat. You, you yeah. can never beat that roster. Like Mario, Link, Samus, um, all your Fire F, like F Zero characters. I mean, we'll throw the Fire Emblem people in there. Pokemon, like Pikachu, Jigglypuff, Kirby, Star Fox, I like guess. And now they've got like Ryu and stuff as well. It's only getting you got, bigger you and bigger every time, isn't it? Ryu, Banjo, Kazooie. Um, like that roster is. They had like characters from uh, Final Fight or like Fatal Fury or something. It's like, yeah, it's kind of hard to compete. They've got a monopoly on this. But, I mean, you know, I, I like the idea of, like, if they did a PlayStation 1. I guess the problem is all the characters I'd want were really pulling far back. Now it'd be, like, Aloy and Joel, I guess. They probably wouldn't oh, put God. Joel. It'd be oh, Ellie. Dude. I think they'd pick Ellie Imagine instead they put of Joel. Abby and Ellie in. It'd be like... <laughs> oh. And then her special move is a golf club. <laughs> she oh. I think I think that's the problem is it's hard to align, like, very mature games that are super violent with, like, the Smash Brothers formula. Yeah. The most mature one in Smash is, like, Samus, really. Like, Metroid is probably as mature as you get, and Metroid is still a level of maturity that's um, not overtly gory or anything. Mm -hmm. It's more in its atmosphere than in its, like, overt tone. So, yeah, I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if you could do it with uh, <laughs> PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale 2 with <laughs> Abby. And their special move is getting a gold club out and beating you to death with it. Dude, there are people who boycott Ooh. the fucking game if they did that. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, you gotta wonder what they gotta do next. Like, I don't I don't even I don't want Naughty Dog to do anything with Jack and Daxter anymore. Like, that was something that they dabbled with. I don't want them to do it anymore. I want them to leave that series alone, and they probably will. They probably think it's beneath it, them. Welcome to the era of just leave everything alone. Just leave it all alone. A little alone. bit, yeah, a little bit. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with my old classic beloved franchises. It's Too bad. Revived you got your Halo show now. Enjoy it. Yeah, and it's already been renewed for season two. Season three? I doubt it. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, nice to see Dev on here. You guys win five points for Canadian representation. Points can be redeemed for maple syrup at your closest Canadian pioneer village. Also, if you guys tried Back for Blood, I didn't. Um, I haven't played it. I've not heard any recommendations, really. I've played Back for Blood um, a decent amount, and I've given that game more than a fair shake and just have no desire to go back to it. I just can't, can't recommend it. It's just too frustrating. It's just, you just feel screwed over too much. <clears throat> Is it fair to say well, that it's outclassed? Sometimes it works and you have fun. Like, Left 4 Dead still? Left 4 Dead 2? I, I, Left 4 Dead's better. Mm. Um, there's good ideas in Back for Blood, but Back for Blood has a lot of moving parts that align or misalign often enough to make you just not want to play. Well, there go. Uh, coin Pouch is the appendix on the wallet. Oh, like implying it's a useless part? Even though it's there's no harm in having it. Well, I mean, I thought the whole conversation establishes that it's not useless. <laughs> like, it isn't a useless. Use. It has a utility. It's just you don't need to rely on it a whole lot, but it's nice that it's there. It'd be useful. You're better off with it than without it. That's the point. It doesn't want to hurt it you. It takes it. It takes up no extra space to have it in there. It's just like a little zipper that you can put stuff in. But mm. if you don't need to, you don't have to. Morley uses medieval. I think that means uh, medieval. Uh, coin purse. And says he's evolved. I think they meant to say evolved. Give up! <laughs> like, you're wrong! Well, I just... <laughs> um, it's just one of... It's like... You medieval evolve person with your <laughs> coin poison. I'm with just like, coin. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe they had, maybe they had this one right. I don't know what to maybe tell you. Maybe they did. Fringy in an Italian restaurant on O'Connell Street, there is a fringoid skull on public display. Is this bad? Also, kick J. A fringold skull, a skull of a plague doctor. Damn. I don't like that. <laughs> That's not nice. Seems disrespectful. Maybe maybe there's a context in which it justifies mm. it, but I don't know. Maybe. 
Hello, Longman, Fringled, Mootle, and Rags. Hello. Hi. What's up? I'm currently catching up, and I'm at 106. Just wanted to pop in and ask if any of you have played Star Wars Episode One Jedi Power Battles for PS1 slash Dreamcast. Nope. Nope. Can't say I have. Haven't even heard believe of it. Believe it or not, believe it or not, yeah, I have. Really? Is it good? Believe it or not, yeah. Is it good? I had fun with it when I was a kid. I don't know how good it is, um, but that was one of those games when I was really young. I had a cousin who was allowed to have a game console, and that was one of the games that he had. So whenever we visited him or he visited us and he had it, we would play it. And uh, it was... Um, it was it was a game that we played. It was like a third person run around, be a Jedi, or you could be like a Captain Panaka and he'd have a gun. Uh, but yeah, you'd go around and do little levels, shoot battle droids, that sort of thing. I wonder um, I wonder if it's any good. Hmm. It was for us when we were a kid. We Speaking were kids, of games so. that are of that era, I've just seen there's a guy who's making a uh, a version of Portal for Nintendo 64. Neat. <laughs> And it's like a, yeah, like an actual, I, these D makes are cool. I like them, like that Bloodborne PlayStation 1 thing. It's a, it's a cool idea. I'm glad that's becoming a style. I've said that like six times, but I, I am. Eventually you'll say, I've been glad that that's a style for a that while now. It's been a style for so long, yeah. Um, I've made it to episode 130 since January. I really thought I'd be caught up by 150, but it looks like I'll fail. You guys have gotten longer and longer. I'll break my not listening live yet accord and be tuning into 150. Hi, Rags. Hi. Oh, I wonder if they're caught up now. Who knows? Mm. EFAP is the one podcast that if you don't look into the lore, I mean, are you a true fan? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to have to answer that question. Since we're on the topic, look up Utah Goldbacks. Easily the most gorgeous design of any money ever, and it can be accepted as U.S. currency. Utah Goldback. Oh, they're like... Interesting for money, I guess. What do they look like? And post you. Eh. That is interesting, yeah. Vertical? Yeah. It's kind of a unique thing about it, right? And that actually can be traded for like US dollars. Presumably, yeah. Oh, there you go. You know. Uh, Ever go looking through your old stuff and find something valuable? I found a $1,000 Blue Eyes White Dragon card from Yu-Gi-Oh! in a shoebox. Wow. Nice. Um, I don't know what I would cite as something that I found that was valuable when I looked back, but I could be forgetting. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, I think we've got a coin collection from like my great-grandfather. I don't know if... Uh, um, I, I'm not. I, I'm so unfamiliar with coins in terms of their values and stuff that I wouldn't know what's going on in there. But I assume there's some rare stuff. But that would be yeah. I don't know anything else that my family have that's like, or that I have. I guess they're saying like, what about just old stuff? And it's like I think I've got, you know, Game Boy stuff around here somewhere. I don't know if that's become. I guess. This is that I don't know how valuable any of those things are. I think, like, if you went on eBay, you'd find an SNES for not that much. Mm. There's just too many of them. Um, but, but maybe if you had, like, a super duper rare version. Maybe. Uh, the beauty of money might be best shown by super chats and Patreon donations. Without money, I'd have sent you guys chickens or corn to show my appreciation to the content you produce. Well. <laughs> We, I'm not against some corn and chicken, you know? I suppose money makes things a little smoother, though. Because it allows us to decide when we will buy our corn or chicken. Money is super useful human invention. Yeah. Hail EFAP, get Fringy on FNT sometime, Irax. He did go on I FNT. I think I've been on Hi! I, I feel like I've been on there before. 
before that, but I could be mistaken. Maybe. I've, been, I've definitely been on, though. Now, anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, Rags. Any thoughts on the observation that the decline of an empire has been historically precluded by the rise of celebrity chefs and highly paid athletes? Keep up the good work, Massives. I'll do it. Uh, well, hopefully, um, that isn't the case. Because I think th things are mostly pretty darn good, and I'd kind of like them to stay that way. Uh, it feels I don't want any now, like a modern of... a, mod a collapse of like a modern country versus an historic empire. It always feels like was well, that a thing compare. that chefs become the celebrity chefs? I, I, I mean, like I'm pretty sure that the the Olympics went for a long time, like in Greece, before anything went wrong there. I feel like it's too simplistic to explain the collapse of major country empires and countries. You know, celebrity chefs and athletes. It just Oddly seems specific. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we've had I, celebrity I like chefs and athletes for fucking ages. Well, I feel like it's just always going to be hard to meaningfully attribute why uh, an empire falls. It's going to be a variety of factors every time in different circumstances historically. Um, you know, like the reason why Greece fell is not the same as Egypt, is not the same as Rome, not the same as the Aztecs. Not the same as the global Welsh civilization or old. The global Welsh civilization that's full was so historic <laughs> that there is no history documenting it. They were just... wiped clean, except for one area yep. where they huddled up. Except for that one stretch of the original homeland. Mm -hmm. The long will rise again. <laughs> uh, I had a dream of remembering deja vu, deja vu of deja vu of deja vu of Mola's reaction to Tomorrow War. Okay. It's a lot of deja vu. Yeah. Mola, I could stand by you. I feel you. like we've had... I feel like we've had this much deja vu before, though. Maybe? I, I know I've said a few times I've had that feeling. Just like, damn, yeah. I remember this memory for some reason. Yeah, it, I, I do have a strange... I, I Yeah. But it can't be true. It just doesn't seem to make sense. It's like a thing. I don't, it, I don't know. I just got that feeling. It's understood on a brain level, you know? Bran. Bran. Moller, I could stand by you for the SJW Nazi racism left-wing 12-hour rants, but I must draw the line at coin purse wallet. Well, only one of us loses as a result of that, okay? It ain't me. My coins are secure. <laughs> <laughs> safe. <laughs> LJ that his video is short and his critiques are poor. Also, hi Ragu and Frongus McDungus. Hey. Hi. Uh, and hello Mubsley. Hello. Can't forget you. Aw. Never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Don't know where that came from, but it's true. It's, uh, Mark Twain, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's unclear how many of these quotes are his. Isn't there a temporary meme on EFAB that we just started attributing quotes to him no matter what? Cause... I think it's because it is a meme that a lot of quotes are attributed to him that probably weren't him. Oh. Uh. Um. Yeah, that is it. That is all the Super Chats that came in for episode... Oh whatever episode that was. Hassan coverage with Dev. It'll be properly titled. So is Hassan... Is this on coverage? Like the super chat? Are they done? No, there's no still another song? section we got to do. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> I know. How many times can you say a man's stupid? <laughs> that they will find a way. That is, it's weird. A because, lot, yeah, apparently. A lot of the messages will just be about the many creative ways to call him an idiot. Uh, which I think that's honestly like of all the things they could be saying about him with the stuff that he does. That's that's pretty chill. He'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Um. But yeah. That's that. That's that one. There's still a couple left, but uh, you shall see them Damn. eventually, folks. Thank you so much for giving this a listen and for your very kind donations. We'll see you in whatever happens next on the old e Fapperoonies. Goodbye. Later, everybody. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody.